come and craft with me today. I have such an exciting video in store for you. We have some of the IODs 2023 spring release items and we are going to have so much fun playing with these particularly the molds but i can't wait so let's just jump on in to get started with diy number one i have to show you the different molds because that's what we're going to be using miss Lori over at milton's daughter sent me three beautiful molds and Every single one of them is just absolutely gorgeous. You're going to love them. And I need to say it right now before I forget, if you want any of the products that you see in this video, you need to go to Lori over at www.miltonsdaughter.com. She has all the products that I'm showing you. This first one is called Dewdrop Pond. Look how beautiful. I love the hummingbird that it's got on there, the dragonfly. It's got frogs, ferns. They're really going with like a cottage core type vibe to me. The next one that I need to show you is called Toadstool, and it's got all different types of mushrooms on it. The detail that has went into these stamps is amazing. IOD never disappoints. I've never gotten a, any product whatsoever from them that I was disappointed in. Matter of fact, they're my favorite products that I have in anything that I have crafting. Now, here's the next one. It's called Hidden Hollow, and it's three different little doors. And to me, they look like little fairy doors or something. They're just so magical and beautiful and kind of romantic-like. So, let's just get started from there. I got this little cutting board shaped flower holder. I got it at Hobby Lobby and I got it back in the fall whenever all their spring stuff was 90% off. Now it has $19.99 on the bottom. I paid $2 for it. That's all I paid for this. And it's time to spruce it up and get it ready for the spring. I'm gonna use this outside in my garden. The first thing that I wanted to do was use some of my clay molds or use clay in my molds. You can use different things in your molds, but I like the DAS clay. It's always been my favorite. You get it off of Amazon. It's cheap and it's good. Now, what I always do is put down a little bit of cornstarch in my molds because it helps them to come out easily and not want to try to stick or anything. I went ahead and just covered all of it because there's so many good things on this particular mold that I didn't know where I was going to go or where I was going to start. So you just kind of squish that mold around in your hands for a few minutes. And I knew I wanted the hummingbird, first of all. And all of the IOD molds have like this little lip on them where all you have to do is run your finger over the mold and it's that easy and it makes the mold perfectly for you. After I made that beautiful little hummingbird, the next thing that I went to was a gorgeous dragonfly. I was going to make my mold pieces with all resin, but the thing with the resin is you have to wait like overnight or at least four to ten hours for it to kind of cure where you can use it. And I wanted to get started right now. So I went over a little ladybug and a little frog and the snail that's in this because I wanted to get my project started right now and the clay can help me do that. Look how easy these come out. Pretty much all you do is turn it over and roll it and gravity does the rest and it comes right out with no problem. If you ever have any problem with your molds trying to stick, all you got to do is stick them in the freezer for about 15 minutes, let them kind of harden up, and voila, they pop right out. They kind of come out by themselves almost. The detail on these are so beautiful. And then the next thing I wanted to do was go over the ones called Toadstool. I wanted to get a couple of those with the clay molds and then I'm going to do resin here in just a moment. So I just went over and picked the mushrooms that I wanted and all of the IOD molds have that same little lip that helps you. All you got to do is push down with your clay and it does the rest for you. It's that easy and you won't believe the amount of detail that are in these little clay pieces when they come out. I just flipped them over and popped them right back out. 
I mean, just look at the detail on these different mushrooms. It always amazes me how creative they are and how attentive to detail they are. I decided to use the beautiful blue color called Petal Pusher, and I'm going to go all around this little container. I guess you could call it. It's like a little flower container, but I'm going to go all the way around it, and I'm going to give it two coats. I love the way that those ferns pop out from that little flower container. I think that's really cool, but for now, I'm just going to paint over the whole thing. And I'm always amazed with the DIY paint, the way that it dries a lighter color right before your eyes. That's because it's clay-based, and it is light, and it's beautiful. It's exactly the color I wanted, and it's a nice spring color. I'm going to take my little hummingbird, and I'm going to take my tight bond wood glue. That's what I like to put my clay and my resin pieces on with. And all you do is just put a little bit of that glue on the back of him, put him down where you want. And since he's in the middle, I don't need to tape him down. He's not going to slide around because I'm going to let it dry laying just like this. So I'm not worried about him going anywhere. The next thing I'm going to do is go down in the bottom left-hand corner and I'm going to add these two little mushrooms that I made. Now, since they're on the side, I know without a shadow of doubt that glue is going to cause them to slide down that side. So, all you do is just take a piece of tape. I like to use that blue tape. I think it's duct tape. And I just put it on there and it holds them to where they're going to be able to dry in place where you want them without sliding. Now, on the right-hand side, I picked that little frog. I have to say, this is far beyond anything that I've ever really been interested in, but I'm really getting into the cottage core and the whole French country vibe, so I am so happy that they come out with all this stuff like these little frogs. I'm going to paint my little hummingbird with two colors that I don't think I've ever used before. The green is called Grotto, and then the pink is called Blushed Pink Rose. And they're both made by Home Decor. You get these at Walmart. And what I did was look up a picture of a hummingbird. Because I hate to say it wasn't fresh in my mind exactly what colors he is. I know they're gorgeous. But usually they kind of have like a green going down the body. A little bit of green touching around on the wings. And a lot of times where their neck and their chest is, it's pink. So what I did was just kind of use my brush to go around all of the little spots. And since these IOD stamps have so much detail, like it didn't fall down into the crevices, if that makes any sense. It just went, kind of glided over the piece exactly where I wanted it to go. So I just used this green and pink color and I used a combination of my finger and the paintbrush to kind of make this little hummingbird look the way I thought that a hummingbird would. And then I just used black for his little beak because most of them have a darker beak like this. Now, I wanted him to make him look realistic, and right now he's really bright, but I have an idea on how to tone him down a little bit. But I did take that black and kind of almost outline his wings with it go to the very back end of his tail and kind of underneath his little belly because to me, that made a very realistic looking hummingbird. Now, if you don't think he's realistic looking, don't tell me because you're going to break my heart. Painting and, and being an artist in that way has never been my stronghold. I have no idea what I'm doing here. I just looked up the picture of the hummingbird, and I promise you, I am trying my best. And sometimes we fail, and sometimes we don't, guys. But you never know if you don't try. So, I just fooled around with it until I thought he looked the way I thought that he should. Now, I pulled out one of my favorite, all-time favorite DIY paint colors, and it is called Gypsy Green. It is the most beautiful green color. Right now, it doesn't look like it because it's not dried. But hey, you got to say it is the color of a frog. So, I just went all the way around him, and I wasn't paying special attention to be perfect, if that makes sense. I was just trying to get the paint on there and make him look the way that I thought he would. I took like a baby wipe and kind of wiped around in certain spots because if you look at a frog, which I don't usually like to, but 
they are not like an all solid color green. They have lighter spots on them, darker spots. So I added a little bit of that antique wax to him and used my finger and just blended him in the way that I thought he should. Then I took this Dixie Bell color called Mud Puddle. Now, I got these back in the fall, and I got them for half off. I'm just trying to get the rest of this used up, but to me, it's the perfect color of a mushroom, so I painted both of my mushrooms with that Dixie Bell color. Then I just closed it up, and we're going to wait until tomorrow morning when everything's good and dry before our next part. Hello there, it's tomorrow morning. And so now we're going to our next part. I'm just going to use some of the DIY White Wax, which is one of my favorite products. Y'all know that. And I'm going to use my little wax brush. And this is how I think that we're going to kind of calm those bright colors down and make this look more realistic. All I did was took the white wax on my little brush and I work in small sections. That way I can control better. You see, I'm not doing anything particular. I'm just going around and putting it on. And then I used a paper towel to get most of it off. I didn't want to use a baby wipe because I didn't want to take too much of it off. I wanted to kind of knock down those colors a little bit. So I just went around, went around and rubbed it off where I wanted it to come off at. I worked all the way around this piece and I just worked in sections, taking off more where I thought it would need it and taking off less where I thought it would need it. Really, when you're using that DIY white wax or any of the waxes, it's just a personal preference. Some people like a lot, some people like a little. Now on here, I kind of used, I guess, a medium amount, I guess you could say. And now here I'm pulling out that Dixie Belle Tobacco Road Color Voodoo Gel Stain. To be honest, I feel like it's the same thing as the Waverly Antique Wax. It just has more of a waxy feel, if that makes any sense. And it's a little bit darker too, I think. So I just went around to try to make shadows, first of all. I'm wanting where those ferns are like embossed on that flower pot, I'm wanting them to kind of get those shadows and get popped up. Like, hey, I'm here too. But just kind of like a little subtle, you know, that it's there. I went over my little hummingbird because I wanted him to have those beautiful shadows also. And I definitely went over to the other side around my little mushrooms anywhere where I didn't get them totally painted on the side like I wanted. And all I'm doing with my antique wax is just kind of creating shadows around this little flower pot. After I put the wax on, I just used a paper towel to kind of go around and to blend it a little bit and to take off any areas that I felt that I may have went too far with. And like I said, it's all just a personal preference. I just play around with it until my eyes are happy. I found a few spots where there was just too, too much of the brown, so I used a baby wipe on them to kind of get that off of there. And here I'm taking another one of those Dixie Bell colors that I got back in the fall, and the color is called Juniper. It's perfect for the frog and it's perfect for those ferns, really. It's that green color that you would expect like a fern or frogs or whatever to be. So I just went around, and since they were embossed and kind of popped up from that flower pot, I used my finger and just went over them. And it just caught in the right spots, and it looked perfect to me. Then I used that Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain again in the color Tobacco Road, and I went all over the top part of this little cutting board because I wanted it to be a little bit darker than what it was. And the last step, y'all know I couldn't help myself since I've been using that spray stain by Tim Holtz. I've been going crazy. And I just kind of sprayed it on there. I like the way it looks when you spray it and it makes like little speckles. And I don't want y'all to run out and go buy some of this. I mean, you can if you want to. I tagged it in the Amazon store in case y'all wanted to buy it. It's really cheap, but I really do believe if you put that antique Waverly wax and some water in a, just a little squirt bottle, you would get the same effect. 
you should try and please let me know if that happens because I really think that that's all you have to do to get it to spray that way. And I may try it in my next video, but I didn't try it in this one. So I just love the way it looks and it really calls out to me. And like I said, it's always just a personal preference. Let me know what you think about this one. right letting you go because you are like a ghost in my mind i want to escape you but i do not believe it was right letting you go i can't stand the thought of losing you tell me do you think of me too because every so I also wanted to ask you to please hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you as part of my family here on YouTube. And if you would, hit the like button because it really helps put me out there in front of people that's never seen me before. And don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know which is your favorite. For DIY number two, we're going to start off with this beautiful frame that I got at the thrift store for only $3.00. And I'm not crazy about the starfish, okay? But I absolutely love the frame. I love any kind of frame that has like little divots in it or little ornate knobs or anything like that. It was made really well, so it was kind of hard to get the backing off. But I got it off so we could get that star out of there. And what I'm going to do is take this beautiful color called Skeleton Key. I have two really pretty colors that are the DIY paint, Skeleton Key and Gravel Road. And I don't usually do Skeleton Key, so something told me, let's do that. Now, this is the very first coat. And this is it when I get the second coat put on and I'm drying it. And remember how I told you it just kind of dries right before your eyes, a totally different color. I absolutely love this paint. There's no paint like the DIY paint in my book. So next I'm going to take a color that I also don't use very often. It's called Cake Batter. And it's a very muted yellow color. And I want to show you with just one coat of this paint, since it's clay based, how it covers up this star so well. Look at that. That's just one coat, y'all. But I went ahead and put two coats on it, and here it is when I'm drying it down, and I want you to see the difference that this paint does right here. It's always one of those ones that I'm like, whoa, every time. The next thing I'm going to do is take my IOD stamp called Kindest Regards. This stamp gets more action than any stamp from them that I have because it is perfect for backgrounds, which is what this is going to be. Now, Kindest Regards is like a love letter that was written, looks like a long time ago, and I put some black permanent ink down and just inked that. And then I was working with a company called Koala. I don't know if y'all remember around Valentine's Day, I did some stickers that were holographic. Well, that was Koala paper. And then this is their matte stickers. This is actually a sticker, y'all, that I pulled off of Pixabay, and I wanted the ends of this picture to be kind of jagged-like, simply because, you know, when I put something like decoupage or whatever, I don't like it having those straight edges. I don't think it looks natural. So, in my mind, I thought I could go around this picture with a little bit of water, and we could just kind of make the edges jaggedy. Well, there was no way to really rip it because it's a sticker, so it's got that thick backing on the back. But I did use my finger, and where I had wet it, it was very easy for me just to kind of scratch off and make it kind of torn looking, that look that I wanted. And all I did was place this sticker down right in the center of where I put kindest regards on that picture. It was funny because, you know, usually with a sticker, you have to pull it from the edges. And since I pulled the edges off, it kind of made it a little difficult to get off there. But I definitely did. I'll leave the link for that koala sticker paper in case any of y'all want any. And here I go with the spray stain again. Y'all didn't think I was going to not use it, did you? 
Not at this point. I've got an addiction going on. So I just covered up the little bunny rabbit with my hand. And you know I like that squirt action. And I used my color called Vintage Photo. And I just kind of squirted it all over the paper. Then I used this little makeup brush in areas where I wanted the stain to be a little bit darker. But I love that look that it gives when you like spray it. I just, the when it dries, it's so beautiful. I also used that Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain in the color Tobacco Road, and I just dipped the very end of that little makeup brush in it, and any areas, especially around that bunny rabbit, that I wanted to be really dark, I used that darker color just to try to kind of blend it in a little bit and make the picture look the way that I wanted it to. Y'all, when I got finished, this picture just blew me away. It was just it was just like an old vintage, like I'm looking at an old vintage paper. I absolutely love that spray stain. And I had a little bit of that color called cake batter still left on my brush. And so I just kind of dry brushed any areas that I thought that I kind of went overboard with. I flipped it over and I'm going to put my picture back in. I just used my tight bond wood glue, went all the way around the picture, and just a very little bit of hot glue, and that picture is going to slide right back in there where he's supposed to go. Now let's go back to me the day before this was happening. I wanted to mix up some of this resin and what you do is mix one part of the resin and then one part of the hardener. And a company that's called Hippie Crafts sent me this for free, and I'm so thankful that they did. All you do is just mix the equal amounts and stir it up for three minutes. Now, the reason why, remember when I was started my first project, I told you I used clay because I could use it right away. Well, at the same time, I made up this resin because that way I could let it sit overnight and all I have to do is come and pull it out in the morning and it's perfect molds waiting on me. So after I stirred it up, I just poured it in where I wanted it to go and voila, the next day it was ready. I actually ended up having the exact amount that I wanted. Everything that I wanted to get a little mold made out of, I got it. I like to make up my resin molds ahead of time and just go ahead and fill up the whole mold tray. And then all I got to do is just pull them out. If I'm not going to use them right now, I just put them in a baggie. And it really saves me time for the next time when I'm wanting to use a mold and I don't want to take the time to make it. Boom, right there it is, already made for me. So here we are the day after the resin had cured once again, and I put my dragonfly up in the corner of the picture. I'm using my tight bond wood glue because that's what I like to get all my molds down. And as you see, I'm using the mushrooms. I've never been a big fan of the mushrooms, the frogs, any of this stuff, but it's really speaking to me lately. I took the fern that was in the dewdrop pond um, mold set and I just put him down kind of in the middle where he's going to be in front of the bunny and I put the little mushrooms on the right side of him and on the left side of him and I couldn't resist putting that cute little snail right there on the right side of him. I just arranged a couple of pieces the way that I wanted them to go and the little mushrooms, I kind of tilted the top on the couple of the mushrooms. Because you know if you see them out in nature, a lot of times the mushrooms, they're kind of like the tops are tilted over. And the resin is really easy to do that with. You just tip it the, co the, or the way that you want it to go. And then you just like put your tape down, leave it alone overnight, and boom, the next morning it's dried and ready. But before I totally put the tape on these, it hit me, why not just put a little bit of color on them? And I had some of these little paint things that come from Walmart. They're called Color Shift. And the color doesn't always turn out the color that you pour it, if that makes sense. It's a color shifter. It, like, changes colors when you move it around in the light and stuff. And I thought that would be perfect to use on the dragonfly's wings. 
I had to pull up a picture of a dragonfly again because you don't see them often, so I didn't really know what colors to do on him. I used a lot of purples, and I used my finger a lot because he had a lot of detail on him, and I wanted those colors just to fall over all that detail in such a perfect and beautiful way. I used that uh, Dixie Bell Voodoo stain, that brown stain, to go on the body of the dragonfly, and he came out so gorgeous, but after I painted him the way that I wanted, I just put the tape back over him and left him alone till the next morning. I took a little bit of that color called cake batter, you know that yellow color that dries so pretty like the color of cake batter, and I put it on my finger, and I painted one of the little tops of the mushrooms with that. I painted all the bodies of the mushrooms and the little snail just with that voodoo uh, gel stain, that tobacco road color, because I wanted them to be brown anyway. And then the next day, I took all of the tape off. I grabbed a little bit of that voodoo gel stain, and I'm going to go around all these little beads, I guess you could call them, like little knobs. I don't know what you would call them, little divots all around this picture because I really want them to be a different color and I want them to kind of stick out. So I used that little makeup brush and that voodoo gel stain and went all the way around them. And here's where I got to play with all my colors. I took that color called Juniper that's made by Dixie Belle and I used my brush and my finger to go over that fern and give it that beautiful green color that a fern is. I used another Dixie Belle color called Muscadine Wine. I got this in October because it was a perfect fall color, but it's also a perfect color that you see on mushrooms, like on their tops. So I painted one of the little mushrooms top that really pretty Muscadine Wine color. Then I used this Dixie Belle color called Pumpkin Spice, and it's a fall color also. And I went over the top of the last little mushroom and just barely brushed it on the other one because I had put cake batter on it. Then I just kind of went around all my mushrooms and added just a little bit of that pumpkin spice just for a little bit of a highlight. Now I'm going to use this Dixie Belle color called Mud Puddle. And I'm going to go around all the bottoms of the stems of these mushrooms and on the little snail, anything that's brown, I'm just going to kind of brush it over and get that color on there. Then I grab my DIY white wax because you know that's kind of my go-to whenever I want to kind of dull colors down a little bit. And I'm using my waxing brush that Miss Lori sent me, and it's especially for waxing. I just dipped it into my DIY white wax and just kind of go over everything. And I used a paper towel to just gingerly and carefully wipe off where I wanted it to wipe off and leave it where I wanted it to stay on my beautiful picture. And you know I couldn't leave, leave well enough alone, so I had to go around with that voodoo gel stain and that little makeup brush and just kind of add shaded areas wherever I wanted to. I didn't really have a rhyme or reason what I was doing. I was just at the point to where I was kind of adding to see what it would come up like. And I really liked the final outcome. And don't you know I had to pull out that spray stain again. I just wanted to put a little bit on there just to kind of see what would happen. Because like I said, if you don't do it, you're never going to know what it's going to look like. And I actually used all three of the colors I have. This one is called Vintage Linen. It's just a lighter brown. And then I used that Vintage Photo, which is a kind of a medium brown. And then the Walnut, which is the darkest of the brown. I just kind of added these and squirted a little bit all around my picture. And if I felt like it was a little bit too much, I just wiped it off. And I just worked it with this little paper towel until my eyes were happy and it got exactly the way that I wanted it to. This is my favorite DIY in this whole video by far. I love this. I was at the wrong place at the right time. Cause suddenly there you were with those bright blue eyes. We were conversing under the night sky. 
when you took my hand said let's leave now don't wanna be shy i will let my guard down don't wanna be shy For the next one, I'm going to use this Sure Bonder uh, glue gun that they sent me in the mail. And thank you, Sure Bonder, for sending it. They sent me a ton of the little glue sticks that goes in this one. This is the smaller one that's like a cordless, but there's also a full size that they sent me. And they sent me one of those glue skillets too. So we're going to use that the next time that we do a wreath. But just thank you so much, Sure Bonder, for sending this. I got this beautiful hat box yesterday at the thrift store. I paid $3.50 for it. And don't get me wrong, it's gorgeous the way it is. And I have an addiction to hat boxes. I love them. They're old and they're beautiful. What's not to like about a hat box? And I'm going to start off with one color that I don't use hardly at all. It's called Water Lily by DIY Paint. And I'm just going to go over the top and look how beautiful this blue color is. It's so perfect for, for spring. And since I was doing kind of bluish tones and everything else, I figured I'd just keep the thing going. And then I want to show you again how it just dries beautifully before your eyes. And this is what we got after our first coat. But I'm going to use one of the new inlays that came in the spring collection with IOD. This inlay is in the one that's called Melange, and it's got the most beautiful things in it. So what you do is you need to put a coat of paint on the object that you're wanting to put the inlay on. It doesn't have to be a thick thing of paint. It just needs to be a good strip of paint. You don't want too much and you don't want too little, but you'll know how much to put on there. Next, I just took my inlay and I chose this beautiful one and you lay it down face first into your paint and then I like to use my brayer and go over it. That way I make sure that I have good contact with the paint and with that piece of paper and then you're just going to mist it. You don't have to soak it down. You can either use like a damp rag or you can use the mister like I did. And then I go back over it again with the brayer to try to make sure I don't have any wrinkles or bubbles or anything like that that might be sticking up. Then you're going to leave it alone and let it dry or use your little dryer to help it along quicker. Now, when it dries, it's going to look like this. You're going to tell that it's dry because it loses that, that vibrant, bright color. And you just mist it again and hold on just a few minutes to where you can actually pull it up. And when you pull it up, you have the most beautiful picture. It looks like it was just made onto that box. Now, if you'll notice right there in the middle, I did have a little area where I pulled the paint up, but that was my fault. It wasn't because of the inlay. And so all I did was just go over it with that little brush that I already had a little bit of that water lily color on, and I just kind of corrected it right there. It's really no big deal at all. Then one of my favorite things that was in my package was this stamp called Birds and Bees. I had to use it, even though in my next video, I'm probably going to use it a little bit more. But it's called Birds and Bees, and it's obvious why it's got birds and bees on it. <laughs> and it's right up my alley, and it's beautiful. Now, before you use any of the IOD stamps, you've got to take some sandpaper or like a sanding sponge or something. And a lot of people say to use 120 grit. And what I do is just go over my stamp in one direction and then you go over it in the opposite direction. And all that does, I think, is just kind of get that stamp ready and perfect. And it takes off any kind of junk or goo that may be on it, which there's never anything on it. I just think it makes it more brighter and gives it a better grip, to tell you the truth. I don't know if any of us know exactly why we do that. But 
you just better do it to make sure. I'm only going to use one bird on this, and what I'm going to do is use my black ink. I always use the archival ink because I can get it off of Amazon. It's really cheap, and it's permanent, and that way I know it's not going to smear. I picked this beautiful bird that's kind of flying in there sideways, and I'm just going to lay him down, and I'm going to put the ink all over him. Now, when I was trying to do it on the sheet of paper, I realized I was not, it was going to get on those bees and that fly that's right there beside that bird. I didn't want those. I only wanted the bird. So, I peeled him off of there, laid him down, and put that ink on him really well. Then I'm just going to pick up my little stamp. I'm going to lay him down where I want him. And you always keep one hand still on the stamp, like you don't move it. And you use your fingers on the other hand to almost like massage the stamp. And that way it's going to get a good connection and you know it's going to come out looking beautiful. And I've got to use a little bit of the wax on it. So it's like a, I have to at this point. So I take my Voodoo gel stain and I kind of go all the way around it and in just certain little areas where I may want there to be that darker shadow sticking up. And then the very last thing that I did to this hat box was take that color called Antique Linen. It's the lightest of all those browns. I wanted that spray to go on him and make that splattery look. I, I mean, I really am enjoying this technique. And from the last video, I know you guys are too. But I just kind of sprayed it on there. And in areas where I wanted it to kind of blend in, I used that little makeup sponge. And on the other areas where I wanted it to splatter, I just let it be and let it dry. And this is very simple, but I hope that you like it. The first one, I'm calling peas and currants, and I spelled currants funny. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with this little bunny form from the Dollar Tree, and I have a drawstring bag. Now, this one's way too big, so any size you have will work perfectly. So since my bag was way too big, I'm going to cut just a little top portion off of it. I'm going to flip it inside out. And then I'm just going to glue that bottom part back down together. We're just totally making a brand new bag right here. And then I'm just going to flip it back the right way. And it's going to look like it was actually made that way. Perfect. Now, since we're going to have this bag cinched together real tight, we don't need that much rope. So I pulled it the way that I'm going to be using it. And then I cut it and tied it back together the way that I needed it so it wouldn't have so much rope. And I'm taking one of these little makeup brushes that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I got mine off of Amazon, but they're at the Dollar Tree. And I'm using that Distressed Oxide in the color Weathered Twigs. I'm just going all the way around it and giving it good shading and kind of dirtying it up a little. I started off using the color Cashew by Waverly, and it was just like the same color as this wood already. I didn't want that, so I took the color plaster, and I'm going to give it just a very, I guess you'd call it like a wet, dry brush. Like, I want a little bit of the wood to show on his little feet and his ears, so I didn't want it to be so perfect. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm getting my weathered twigs, that Distress Oxide again, and you can buy this off Amazon. All this stuff I mentioned from Amazon are in my Amazon store. I'm using my little makeup brush, and all I'm doing is going all the way around this bunny, and I'm kind of shading it in and kind of dirtying, dirtying him up just a little bit. So I go a little bit darker, if you notice, kind of around the feet, around the ears, and then I just use a baby wipe to kind of calm it down if I get a little bit too wild and too dark. You just do it to your own personal taste and the way that you want it. I also kind of went all over the middle part of the bunny, too, because we're going to dirty him up a little bit. 
And don't worry, we go right back over him with that um, plaster color in a minute in case you get too wild there. Now here, I didn't like the gathered twigs, so I went ahead and used that Tobacco Road by Dixie Bell. Now, to me, this, this is what I think on the Tobacco Road Dixie Bell. That Waverly Antique Wax is just about the exact same color. So if you have that Waverly Antique Wax, you can use it to shade him in too. I just felt that that gathered twigs was a little bit too light for what I wanted. So here I'm dry brushing back over him with that color plaster. I'm just using what's on my brush, literally, anywhere where I got too wild with the dark. Here I'm taking two little strips of cotton muslin that I had got. I'm pretty sure I got it from Walmart. It's just cotton muslin and it rips really easy. I had to use two strips because mine was just about an inch thick and I want about a two inch. I just want it to go behind this little wood tag and so it'll stick out if that makes sense. I glued those two little pieces of cotton muslin together. Now I had coffee stained these uh, cotton muslin. That's why it's already that darker color. And then here I'm just kind of fiddling around with my little bag so I can figure out exactly how it's going to look when I put that little sign on the front. Now my bag was still too wide so I curled the edges in, put a little bit of hot glue, and like just folded them over and you're never going to know the difference. Now here, I'm just putting glue all over the back, and I'm going to glue that down to the bottom portion of my bunny. The string was still too long, so I cut a little bit of it off and retied it. I was looking for something with a flat edge, and all I could find was my little pop socket thing that goes on the back of my um, phone, and I'm going to put the word carrot on here now. Y'all would laugh at me if you knew how many times I did this word carrot. I bet I had to throw away three or four of these wood tags, and I'm talking front and back. I'm not kidding. I'm going to get me some of those little clickable stamps that are smaller than these, and these drive me crazy because when you push down on the ink, it gets it all in a square around it, and I cannot stand that. And the word carrot was a little long for this tiny tag, and that's how I kind of come up with the word carrot, C-A-R-U-T, to kind of put you in the mind that it's a little bunny rabbit that don't know any better, and that's just the way he spells it. Hey, it was quick thinking I had to do something, because I was so mad at myself for not being able to make this look right. I mean, I was already kind of running on a time crunch because I had a stomach bug this week, and that put me behind. I had to take Roxy to the vet, and then just all my normal things. I keep my grandson a few days a week. And so, guys, I was just trying. I was running against the clock trying to get this done. So, yeah, I ended up spelling it C-A-R-U-T-S, carrots. And I thought that was cute. I don't know. And then I just went around it with the weathered twigs, that distressing oxide, and I really distressed this really well. Y'all are absolutely going to love the way this turns out. And I think I did okay for not ever really doing primitive farmhouse before. So I just glued that word carrots onto my little piece of cotton muslin, and I'm going to glue that to the very front of my little drawstring bag. But make sure you glue it where you're gonna be able to see it. Now here I'm gonna take three carrots, and this was just a personal preference. I'm gonna wrap them in different types of fabric. The first one I am wrapping from a bow that I got from burlappedfabric.com, and I'll leave their link below in case you're looking for this exact one. I love this ribbon, it's so pretty. And I'm just putting a little glue and wrapping it around because that way you can still see that orange through it, but it's not that bright, hey, see me orange, you know? Because the thing is with primitive, it's really muted tones. It's kind of dark. It, there is no really bright things when it comes to primitive that I've seen. So I was really trying to tone it down, but still kind of stay true to myself, you know? And then I used this beautiful 
On the second carrot, I'm using this gorgeous homespun that I got from Hobby Lobby. That's where I always get mine at. And it's about an inch thick. You just cut it and then you just rip it with your hands and it rips straight. And I go kind of upward and around. And then when I get to the top, I just glue that down. And the greenery that I'm using is from some flowers that I got from the Dollar Tree. They're so pretty. And what I did was just cut it off of the stem. It's actually called greenery. It kind of looks like Dusty Miller to me. But anyways, I just put a little bit of it in the top. And then when I fold that, the sides of that fabric over, it looks like a pretty little carrot. And I had a little bit of trouble getting the stem into this one. So what I did was just take a little skewer, make a little bit bigger hole, and put some glue on the end of my little greenery and popped it right in there. And on that very last one, I'm wrapping it in that cotton muslin that I had stained in tea. I said I had stained it in coffee, but I'm about 99% sure that it was actually tea that I stained it in. So I just went up around and put that greenery in the same as I did the other two. And so I have a cotton muslin, a striped one, and then that pretty lace. I took that Dixie Bell wax again called Tobacco Road and just put a little bit out and dabbed it on the end of my makeup brush. And I'm just kind of brisking over all of my little carrots to dirty them up a little bit and make them look a little bit more vintage and primitive. I took a nice long piece of that beautiful homespun that I have and I'm going to tie this around her neck just to kind of make it look like a little makeshift bow there. Now, all that's going to be covered up for the most part, so I didn't want to go crazy on the bow. Just a simple little bow will be beautiful and plenty. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of that Spanish moss into that little pouch and stick my three little carrots down in there. And I realized that that Spanish moss needed to be sticking up a little bit more and that my carrot tops were way too big so I just kind of trimmed the top of those off and then I'm going to add a little bit more Spanish moss so that it looks right. I really wanted some of that Excelsior to use but I didn't have any so I just used this Spanish moss and it'll work just fine but I think Excelsior would have looked better. Now here, I'm just cutting out two circles out of that beautiful homespun that I have, and I'm going to glue these down to the bunny's feet. Now I'm going to take some of this folk art paint that I got at Walmart. It's called Crushed Coral, and this is going to be the inside of her ears. Now, I had very, very little on my brush. I actually just kind of did it dry brushing technique. Now, that first one I put on there, I went way too much, so I just wiped it down with the baby wipe and then kind of went around. And you want to go around almost like in an oval because that's what the little bunny's ears look like. And the only heart that I could find, I wanted a wood heart, but all I could find was these little foam hearts that had glitter. And I painted it in crushed coral also. So then I just glued the little heart down, upside down, because this is going to be the bunny's nose. And then I took a dowel, just a round dowel, and at first I had dipped it in the black ink and to make her eyes, but it does so much better in black paint. I go ahead and leave in all the boo-boos too, just so you can see. But see whenever I do the ink, how it just barely shows up. And here is when I use the Rich Black. It is the home decor brand. And look how much better that turns out. It's just perfect little circles. You may have to just daub it one or two times just to make sure you get a good full coverage. And then I took the color plaster again and I put it on the end of a very small paintbrush and we're just putting two little dots up at the top for her eyes. I'm taking two of these little pieces of the Dollar Tree wire. It, go, it comes in the automotive section and it's not very like 
harsh wire. I think it has some type of a plastic coating on it, but I just cut two whiskers on each side and we're just gonna slightly glue those underneath the nose. And then I trimmed them off because you just cut them to whatever your per personal preference is. Now we're gonna put her to the side and we're gonna work on her little hair bow. What I did was cut about four inch strips. It may be a, more like three inch strips, but I have a piece of drop cloth. I have two sets of the little striped homespun. And then I have a piece of that beautiful lace ribbon. I just made X formations and I'm just tying it in the center. And that's gonna be her little hair bow. It's just a simple little messy bow where you place your X's together and then you tie it in the middle. And you want to glue this a little bit higher up on her ear there because you don't want it to cover up her little eyes, but you do want that hole to be covered up on the very top of the bunny because uh, unless you're going to use it for a hanger, but I'm not using it for a hanger, so I definitely wanted that piece covered up. And it just fell just beautifully, and then you just kind of trim it up. If you want to dovetail the ends, dovetail them, but I just kind of cut them at an angle. And then I took one of my beautiful little buttons and just placed it right in the center and added an even smaller button because that's kind of my signature thing. And then here you see I just trimmed them off kind of at an angle. I took a very small little tomato basket that I have, and I'm just going to dry brush it in the color plaster. You don't even have to paint it at all. I just wanted it dry brushed, but I very, very lightly dry brushed it because I still wanted that beautiful wood to show through. And then I also kind of dry brushed over it on the inside because you will be able to see some of that part. Then I'm going to take some of that Spanish moss and I'm going to fill up my basket. Then I realized I needed to put some rocks in the bottom of the basket because it will be top heavy. So put you something heavy down in the bottom of your basket. I took a dowel and I'm going to glue it to the back of my bunny and just a piece of fabric because that helps it stick a little bit better so it doesn't come apart. And I'm just going to glue that dowel to the very back of my basket here. And I had already placed my heavy rocks, not many, just maybe 15 to 20 of the little pebbles from Dollar Tree inside that basket there. And I glued my little bunny there. Then I just finished it off by taking these three little eggs that I got from the Dollar Tree, or they're actually kind of big eggs, and I stuck those in the basket. You can put any eggs you want in there. I hope you like this one. The next one is called bunny bait. You're gonna need a total of 12 shims. We're gonna make carrots out of these shims. Now you can get shims very cheap at any hardware store and they also sell them at Walmart for just a couple of dollars. And all you're gonna do is just put some glue down and glue them together. And like I said, it was four for each carrot. So you need a total of 12. I found the best way to put these together and make them even because sometimes, you know, with shims being so cheap, sometimes they're kind of uneven and kind of warped a little bit. So what I did was put the glue on them and turn them sideways and use my hands to make sure that they all came out even. I wanted to take just a moment to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family. We would love to have you and we always have room. And hey, hit the like button if you're really enjoying this video. It helps put me out there in front of people who've never seen my content before. 
Now what you do here is get you some color of orange. I used Pumpkin Spice by Dixie Belle, and I am almost dry brushing because I didn't go like a full coat. I wanted some of that wood to show. So I guess you could say I am strongly dry brushing over this in the Pumpkin Spice color. The second one, I picked the color Celery by Waverly because I really like it. It's a very pretty muted green and it goes perfect with Primitive Farmhouse. And I did the exact same technique, almost like a very um, strong dry brushing. Then on the very last carrot, I used the color plaster because I needed some type of an off-white color and I did the exact same technique like a heavy dry brush. Then I used the Dixie Belle Tobacco Road again to put some shadows on these and kind of age it and make it look vintagey. I went around all the edges really well and I just used like a little distressing brush too and I kind of added it darker around the edges, but I added it all over these little carrots. Then I took some of that beautiful homespun that I have, and I only cut about one inch, and then I ripped it all the way down because I love that beautiful frayed look, and that goes to the primitive uh, farmhouse, both primitive and farmhouse. <laughs> And then I used that beautiful cotton muslin and I did the same thing. I used about one inch strips and ripped it down. And then I just made some beautiful figure eight bows, very simple. What I did was make it with the cotton muslin to go in the back and then with that homespun to go in the front. So I literally had two bows placed together. Now, if you don't know how to make the figure eight bows, they're very simple. You just make your little figure eight and you pinch it down in the center. And then I like to use jute twine to tie it together. And I like to tie mine in the very front, you see. And then I just left that jute string on there because it lends to the look of the primitive farmhouse. And like I said, I did this a total of three times, but after I made that first bow, I realized that I wanted to use some of this beautiful lace that one of my subscribers had sent me. Thank you, Miss Kathy, for sending me that beautiful, all the Snoopy stuff and all the lace. I love you from the bottom of my heart. And this is the lace that she sent me. It's a really pretty white lace, and from what I'm understanding, it was her mom's, and it's really old. So we're going to place that in the back, and we ended up with a total of three bows. We have the lace, the muslin, and the homespun, and they're all tied together with the jute cord. And what you're going to do is just put a good dab of glue on the top of your carrot, and, you know, the side of the carrot is going to be the front of your carrot, so pick whichever your best side is, and then you're just going to place your bows right there on the side. Then I took a coordinating button, and I'm going to place it right in the center. On this one, I used an orange button, and of course, I used a off-white button for the plaster and the green color for the celery. Now here, I'm using these doggone stamps again, and goodness gracious, here we go. You know I just love these things to death, not. And so I made the word bunny bait. And it actually didn't turn out too bad. And it kind of looks like a little kitty put it together. So I kind of like that. And I'm going to use that distressed oxide again in weathered twigs and go all around this and kind of dirty it up and make it look real primitive. I'm going to take about two inches of that muslin like I did before on the first one, and I'm going to glue the bunny bait sign down to it and just cut off the edges. Well, actually, I cut it and then ripped it so that it would have that beautiful frayed edge, and I'm going to tie some jute cord around this little sign that says bunny bait, and we're going to place this around the little button on the orange carrot because since carrots are orange, I wanted the carrot, that orange carrot, to be kind of the main one, and it's going to go in the center, and it's the one that's going to have the word bunny bait on it. 
I did just use a little dab of glue to make sure that that is going to stick around that button really well. And then I just cut my ends down to the fashion that I wanted them. And here again, I'm just taking that Dollar Tree flowers called Greenery. And this is how you do it. You just cut the flower off and you pull off that little stem part or the leaf part. And I just took a little bit of my Spanish moss. I'm going to glue that to the very top of my carrots. Make sure you protect those little fingers because they help you out every day. Be nice to them. And if you need to make a tiny little haircut, go ahead and make one. I had to cut the little end of the leaves off because it was too long. And then I just glued it right down inside of that Spanish moss and it turned out beautifully. Now I try to position the greenery right behind where the buttons are because it just looked right in that place. And I did this to all my little carrots. I did the Spanish moss and then I added the greenery to the top of each one. And that's all there is to this one. I'm gonna show you how I would style it in my home in a simple basket. The last one is a beautiful egg wreath. Now this one's really easy. I'm going to use two of the 14 inch wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. Mine happened to be kind of a yellowy gold color, so I spray painted them white. And I'm going to need a total of 15 to 16 of these beautiful eggs. I'm going to paint three of them the color Prom Queen, which is this beautiful baby blue color. I'm going to paint another three of them Apothecary, which is my favorite green color. Three of them are going to be this color called Liquid Sunshine. And then I'm just going to use this color called seashell pink and it's folk art and this color is called lilac by home decor now i'm not going to show myself painting these because it's just the same thing i'm just painting them and i just want to let you know that i had eight of those styrofoam eggs and about eight of the little plastic ones i far 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 liked the styrofoam eggs better because you can stick them in that skewer and they were so much easier to paint. And they didn't have the speckles on them. And so you just had like a clean slate and it was so much easier to do it that way. So you just pick five different colors of paint and you're gonna paint three eggs in each of those colors and you will come out with a total of 15 eggs. Now here's my wreath forms after I painted them white and I only painted the outside white because you're never going to see the inside. And I'm taking some of that Spanish moss that I got when I was down in Florida and you're just going to put your Spanish moss all around the inside of your wreath. You don't have to go crazy with it and really pack it full because you got to remember you're going to have that egg in the eggs in here too. And so it's going to look fuller than what it is. Then I just took my eggs and went all the way around the circle and I stayed in the same pattern that I had all the way around. I did green, yellow, blue, purple, pink, and then I repeated that and it just comes out so beautiful, I think, when you do it this way. The next thing that I did was take four tie wraps and I'm going to tie wrap these two wreaths together. What you're going to do is place it around two of those rungs and if possible, you need to try to put your tie wraps where the little line goes across. That way you're never even going to see that if that makes sense what I'm saying there. Now I put my tie wraps in the front here but now that I think about it, it would have been so much smarter if I would have flipped this wreath over and placed it on the back side. That way you would have never seen those tie wraps whatsoever. 
But like I said, I try to figure out the hard stuff so that you don't have to, and I try to make it easier for you. Now, if there's any places where you need a little haircut and need to cut this Spanish moss, just cut it. It's not going to hurt a thing. And there may be some areas that need to be a little bit fuller. So either you can stick some more Spanish moss in there or you can just use what you already have and try to stretch it out. Now, here I have some of the little wooden bunnies that are at the Dollar Tree right now. And I'm using my little crocodile tool and all it does is make holes in anything you can imagine. So I'm just gonna make two little holes in the bunny's ears and I'm going to weave this black and white thread in and out of their little ears because I wanted to hang them up in the center of the wreath. And I wanted to use black and white bows on these little bunnies too. You remember at Christmas, I had bought those little tiny bows off of Amazon. That's what I'm using here. And I'm going to make one a little boy in the middle and put him a bow tie on. And the other two are little sister bunnies and they're going to have the little bows in their ears or hair, whatever you want to call it. And then you just take the little um, jute twine and you're going to tie it onto the back of your little frame here. And that way, it's going to hang almost like a little garland. I've got some Dollar Tree wired ribbon, and I'm just going to make a very simple figure eight bow. And I'm going to tie it together with a little tie wrap. And I'm going to place it kind of catty corner on the front of my little wreath form. And since I use tie wraps for everything else to put this wreath together, I'm just gonna simply tie wrap my little ribbon right onto the front of my wreath form. And then the very last step on this wreath is to take my Distress Oxide, and I'm also taking that little makeup brush that I've got, and I'm just gonna go all around the little bunnies. Of course, all the way around the actual image, I go a little bit darker and then just a little bit lighter on the inside. But since this is primitive farmhouse, I had to kind of grunge it up and make it look old and vintagey so that it would match the whole vibe. This wreath was so easy to make and I hope you guys try to make it. It's super cheap and simple and you're gonna love the way it looks. Stay tuned so you can see my chickens and my little puppy, Roxy, and my grandson. And if you stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate every single one of y'all, and I'm so glad that you came and spent some time with me today. And I hope that you guys like that I tried something a little bit out of my comfort zone. And I would like to keep doing a couple of DIYs like this. So let me know what you think. And it just goes to show, don't ever be afraid to try something out of your comfort zone. The worst thing that can happen is you can mess up, but you can always fix it. And I believe in you guys. I know y'all can do it. It just takes a little bit of practice. I believe it or not, a couple of years ago, I had never even done DIYs or crafts before in my whole life. I only started maybe a year before I started my channel. So I haven't been doing it that long. And like I said, I believe in you guys and you can do it. Now, I hope that I can see you back on Monday. If anything happens and my video is not going to be on Monday, I will let you know in the community tab. So be looking for that. And I will see you guys very soon. I hope that every single one of y'all has a blessed weekend and a blessed week next week. I'm sorry, I don't have any mealworms. She's looking in her, that's her mealworm bag. She's looking like, oh, really? But there's a bag. I'm so sorry, Retta. I'm so sorry, baby. I'm sorry. I love you. 
See, the bag is empty. The bag is empty, Retta. It's empty. It's empty. That means no mealworms are in there. I'm so sorry. I love you. I'll get you some today, okay? I gotta take Roxy to the vet and I'll get you some today. Okay. The bunny wreath. I've been trying to challenge myself lately and do some more wreaths and practice a little bit more. And I came across a tablecloth wreath the other day. So I'm going to use this little bunny form from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to use three tablecloths. They're the rectangle. I'm going to use one pink, one blue, and one white. The other day, I was watching DIY with Nadia, and she makes some beautiful wreaths. Well, she had one of those round Dollar Tree wreaths, the 14-inch, and she was making this tablecloth wreath with that. And I thought, I want to try it with the bunny form. All you do is you open up your tablecloth, and you're going to cut it in half. And then the next step is you're going to cut that piece in half once more. And so you're going to have a total of four pieces at this point. Well, the two pieces that are on the end, the way that they are made, you're going to have to kind of open them up and cut straight down the middle of those. Because if you don't, it's going to be just closed and you're not going to be able to use it. So you're going to have a total of six strips. They're about an inch and a half wide. And don't worry about if it's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect, trust me. But all you do is you bend them in half and you cut that half. And then you're going to just like cut the little corners to make it look like a little fence post. You see here, I'm just taking it and bending it over. And like I said, you don't have to be precise about this. And you make a cut. Then you're going to take the piece that you just cut in half and just cut the ends to make it look like a little arrow or like a little fence post, you know, like a little picket fence. And like I said, do not worry and stress out about the pieces not being perfect. They are not going to be. But in the end, this is the prettiest wreath. You will not believe what it turns out looking like. So you go through your three tablecloths, the pink, the blue, and the white, and you're going to do this to all of them. You're going to cut it in a total of six pieces, and then you're going to cut the little picket fence pieces, and then you just put them all together according to their color. The little bunny wreath form is only a 9.75 inch, and it has four different sections. And each of those sections has the three little rungs. All you're going to do is take one of your pieces and don't take two or three. They stick together, trust me. So just make sure that you're getting one piece. And all you're going to do is tie it. Don't worry about trying to double tie it or anything like that. It's going to hold together simply because of the way the material is. So all I'm going to do is tie it. And I'm going to do two of each color. Like here, I started off with the white one. And so I'm going to do one more white. And just try to keep your colors in order the way that you've got them going. The first two, I did white. And then the second two, I'm going to do those blue. And then the next two are going to be pink. And then I'm going to start right back over again with the white, blue, pink, white, blue, pink. And I'm going to keep going until that first little rung is filled up. Now to totally complete this wreath, I think it took me about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I'm not going to lie, it's very time consuming, but it's very repetitive and easy. You're just doing the same thing over and over. You're tying two of each color. And then when you do get finished with that rung, you kind of squish them together so that they will be fluffy and pretty. And it's going to look sparse at first, but don't worry. When you finish, it's going to be full and beautiful. When I finished my first three rungs in that first section, this is what it looks like. And look how full and beautiful this is. And you just kind of use your hands to fluff it out. And like I said, these are the first three rungs. If you want to, you can just do the very inside one and the middle one, and it's going to be full. But I just like the way it looks with the three. And this is what the back of your wreath is going to look like. 
all of the pieces are going to be pushed toward the front and they're going to be fluffy and gorgeous now i'm going to go ahead and do those four sections on the bottom and then we'll come back now this is what it looks like when we have the whole bottom part of the wreath done and look how beautiful i felt like spongebob like in this it was saying uh, three hours later and now here i am so the way that we are going to do the ears is the exact same i just started off with pink and i found that it was easier to do just the one you know the bunny ears are just a single wire it was so much easier not having to fool and maneuver yourself around the other wires so it went a lot quicker but i'm doing the exact same thing i'm putting two pink two blue and two white all the way around the ears i'm going to go ahead and finish this little area and then i will come back whenever i'm finished and i hope that you guys are enjoying this video so far i wanted to let you know that if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family here on crafty kathy we would love to have you and we always have room for more and if you would hit the like button that's the thumbs up button because it really helps push me out there to people that have never seen me before and i want to share my love with everybody okay <laughs> so here we are when we are totally finished with the wreath and i'm very proud of it and i think it turned out beautiful now we're going to make a bow and i'm using some of my favorite stuff to talk about you know i can't never pronounce it i know it's tool but why does it spelled so strange it looks like tule toile tule i do not know but it's tool it's such an uninteresting name but anywho i've got the pink and the blue together and all i'm doing is walking it down with my fingers in the middle and then i'm going to pinch it in the center and i'm going to just stick a little clip on there because we're going to tie some jute around it in a minute it's kind of just like a little makeshift bow it's going to go behind our bow to give it a little oomph now the ribbon that i'm using is just like a little gingham pattern it's pink and white and it came from hobby lobby but they sell this exact same kind at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to show you how I make my bows. It's very simple. I just make two little loops like I'm going to be tying my shoes, right? And I just tie it together exactly like you would your shoes. And that's how I make my bows. It's very easy. I don't do all my bows this way. But this is a super simple, easy way to make a little finger bow. And then I just kind of maneuver it, play with it, get it exactly how I want it, and then I'm going to cut the tails. Now, I don't know if I said it already or not, but this bow does not have any wire, and that's why I put that toile tool behind it, just to give it a little, you know, pop, so it'll kind of help it stand up and give it a little bit of body. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this little pit berry that came out. Um, I got it last Easter, but I'm sure it'll be back out again this Easter at Dollar Tree. And it's the um, beautiful different colors, very light Eastery colors. And I just made like a figure eight with mine and then use the excess to wrap it around the center to hold it on. I'm first going to put a little dab of glue on my toile, my tool, and I'm going to place it what it looks like on the little bunny's ear so it would look like she's got a little hair bow on. Then I place down my pit berry, and then I place down my gingham ribbon. And then I found the most beautiful little gem from Totally Dazzled. I don't know if you guys have ever like looked at the Totally Dazzled gems. They're only like a dollar or two for each one. And they're, they're a good little thing to pop on your crafts. And just to give it a little extra something something. I'll leave the link down below so y'all can go and check it out. And my link already has my discount in it. So y'all can get a good discount. And another thing that I did was I took some baby's breath. This is the kind that comes from Walmart. Now, listen to this, guys. I didn't even use any glue. I don't like using glue if I can help it in my wreaths because you can use the stuff later. All I did was pull this off, and it was kind of longish. And since I've got all of that tablecloth tied around the wire, 
it made it to where it's almost like it's just hugging that baby's breath. It held it right in place. So all I had to do was just slide it through the wire exactly where I wanted it, and it held it in place. It was perfect. It was probably the only thing that went right for me this week because this was a bad week for me, y'all. I had everything in the world happen to me. Whatever could have happened, happened, okay? And so anyways... I just went all the way across her head, almost like it's a little tiara, and I thought that was just the cutest thing. I didn't like it when it didn't have the, when I just put the ribbon on, I just felt like it was still plain, and it, it didn't, you know, do it for me, but when I put the baby's breath in, it just kind of made it like, oh, this is what it's supposed to be. This is so cute. I kept fooling with more and more of this baby's breath until I had went all the way across her head and it was as full as I wanted it and I was 100% satisfied so I finally stopped on that endeavor. <laughs> I gave it a quick little fluff and guys, I still wasn't totally happy yet. So I was looking around to try to find something and I found these little flowers that I got at a thrift store. They originally came from Hobby Lobby, probably in their wedding section. And you just like glue them together to make whatever shape of flower you want. And so I glued three little pieces together and I put a flower on one side of her bow and then one on the other side of the bow. And I was finally happy with this wreath. I hope you like it too. The next one is going to be a sweet little bunny lantern. I started off by taking a candlestick from the Dollar Tree. It was already painted black and it was like late at night and I wasn't about painting this thing, trying to spray paint at 10 o'clock at night. So I was like, okay, black will be fine. We can do black. And then I took just a regular wood round. I'm going to put some glue on it and I'm going to glue it down to the top of my candlestick. And I cut out a piece of foam that was the size of the wood round and put it on the top. And I've got this little pair of bunnies that I got from the thrift store for like a dollar or two. And I like them the way that they are. But I'm just telling you, anytime that you take one of these little animals like this and you paint it white, like solid white, it just gives it a high-end look and it brings it up a notch. And for whatever reason, these bunnies look so creepy with their black eyes. So please, for the love of all things that are great, please do not leave their little eyes black because it looks so weird and you'll wake up in the middle of the night and those little bunnies will be staring at you with those black eyes. And it's just so strange looking. But anyways, I just took the Waverly chalk paint in the color white and what I'm doing is almost dry brushing these bunnies because they had like all kinds of divots all over them and it just went down in there perfectly and it made them look like they were distressed actually. And you may not be able to find bunnies just like mine, but look, I got this bunny at the Dollar General. They come out with them every year. Not the Dollar Tree, but Dollar General. They are a dollar a piece. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to take these bunnies. I have three of them, and I'm going to paint them all white. And I want to show you in just a second, a side-by-side, -side, how it takes these little bunnies that almost look cartoonish to me. You know, they just don't look real. They're cartoony looking. And it takes them from that into something that's absolutely high-end looking. Two of these little bunnies are holding a carrot. One says Happy Easter, 
and the other one's just holding his little carrot and the other one is holding a little flower now these are cute as they can be and they remind me of the ones that come out at the dollar tree the little bunnies that are like squatted over but these have a lot more detail and they're just a dollar also so if you can find these at the dollar general look for them and you're going to be happy now here is a side by side look at the difference in these and you may not agree with me but make sure you paint them eyeballs i'm just telling you or they're going to be crazy looking and they're going to come and get you in the middle of the night so here i took some moss i had to find this moss at the dollar uh at the hobby lobby actually because i cannot find any that doesn't stink from the dollar tree like mine has been having this weird smell when i get it from the dollar tree i don't know what's up with that i don't want to know i just got me some from hobby lobby and called it you know one of those mysteries in life i don't know so all i did was just put a little bit of glue on the top and then i just kind of use my fingers and this is a no-no because you got to protect your fingers guys don't be dumb like me and burn yourself every time but i just kind of spread it out and use my fingers lightly you know and burn myself about two or three times but i get the job done and i just kind of patch it on the top and i'm also going to go around this to make it look like that little um, floral foam is moss now here comes my favorite part i'm going to be using this greenery also the lamb's ear and the boxwood I like to use three different types of greenery if I have it because the different textures just really bring something to your project. Now, this is a wreath that I bought on clearance. It was like at the end of spring or something last year. I got it at Dollar General. I only paid like a dollar for it. And I just pulled out all these little separate pieces and what I like to do on any of my floral things is whatever I put on the left, I put on the exact same spot on the right. I like to watch that guy Ramon at home on YouTube, and he always teaches that, how you, what you do on the left, you do on the right, and what comes up and must come down. I love him. But like, so in other words, he means by that, if you put something kind of up in the air, you're also going to put it on the exact opposite side, kind of going down. Like, for instance, this boxwood is kind of sticking up. The next little boxwood that I cut, I kind of aimed it downward. And I cut it according to where it would not be too long and sticking out and looking crazy. But you see here, I made this one kind of going down where it's kind of going to flow over the side of that candlestick, whereas the other one was sticking up a little bit more and i always follow that rule that what you do on the left you do on the right it just makes everything look very cohesive and it just works i mean that's the way that you do your florals and they're going to turn out pretty every time i promise you and just fluff them out and just don't try to do too much because my problem is sometimes i try to add too much and it gets too busy and kind of tacky and we don't want tacky we want pretty so well, i took my little bunnies and i set them up on that little pillar of moss there so i could see what this is going to look like and i figured out which part is going to be the front and guys this is so beautiful just the way it is so i figured out where my little bunnies go and i'm going to keep going with my project here i put one or two more pieces of the little lamb's ear and i absolutely love the lamb's ear from the walmart and the boxwood actually i think it's just the best quality and you can't get any better than that it looks like the little bunnies are kind of hiding under the lamb's ear and it turned out so pretty and soft now the next thing i'm going to do is put in my actual colors or flowers if whatever you want to call it this is called greenery it came from dollar tree last year and this was my very most favorite floral that they came out with of all of last year at dollar tree it had some cute little yellow pops in it little purple pops so i'm going to take the yellow and i'm going to stick it right in front of the little bunnies so that we can give them a pop of color 
And of course, whatever I do on that side, I'm going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So I kind of go behind them and put another little yellow piece. And then I start in with my little purple piece beside them. And I added in a couple of more little yellow pieces. I love these yellow pieces. I think they're beautiful and they are perfect for spring and Easter. And they just bring in that perfect touch. Now these are some little berries. I think they came off of the same sprig. I may be mistaken, but they're pinky colored. And I put one on the left, kind of toward the back of the bunnies and one on the right there. Now I'm gonna make a simple bow because I'm gonna add these little bunnies to my lantern. I know you guys remember the lantern that I made at Christmas time. It's a staple in my house. I use it for all seasons. I just decorate it for the different seasons. And here, all I'm doing is making like literally circles with my ribbon and I glue it down in the back. I got this ribbon from Discovery Outlet last year for $4.99 and it was such a good deal. It's a huge ribbon. You see, all I did was just pinched it in the middle after I made my little uh, circles, I guess you could call it, and then I put jute around it. This is just a very simple way to make a bow. And then the way that I make my tails is I'm just going to get a long piece of ribbon. I'm just going to cut it off and I don't measure. I never measure. And I just kind of pinch it right in the middle of that ribbon. And then I'm going to put some more jute twine and that is going to be my tails. And of course, I'm going to dovetail those. But you know, I liked this ribbon, but when I set it up on my wreath, I changed it because it was just too almost childish looking for what I had going on there. And I'm gonna show you pictures of my bunny inside my lantern and outside. I don't have any light yet inside my lantern, and so it kind of made it a little bit more difficult to see, but it's so beautiful, I wanted you to get a great look at this, and so easy to make. The last one is going to be some framed decor. In my craft room, I have an overflow of thrifted frames. It seems like every time I go to the thrift store, I find more frames. I don't need them, but I like ones that have unique, like something unique about them, something different. So we're going to do something with a couple of these so I can give it a new home. The first one that I did was this one with the little bird houses on it. I loved the color that was originally on this one, but the bird houses, I did not like them with all that color. So what I wanted to do was take some of the chalk paint in the color ivory, which is Waverly, and I just gave this two full coats all over. The next one that I did was this smaller brown one. 
I absolutely love this frame, but I didn't like the color, so what I did was gave it two coats of my Debbie's DIY paint in the color Apothecary, which is my absolute favorite spring color of all time. I went over this one with my Debbie's DIY white wax and my waxing brush. I just went all over the whole thing and then I wiped off the excess with a paper towel. I just absolutely love the way it looks whenever you wipe the white wax back and it's so pretty and it's really pretty with the color Apothecary. Now I have a small piece of rice paper that I made myself. This is from one of my Google images and I just picked the image of the little bunny and I made it that small. And I will know that I want to put that on there. And then I went through my cardstock and found this beautiful piece of cardstock that's pink and white. And I just cut it down to the size of the frame. And then I placed it inside the frame. Then I took the rice paper image of my little bunny and I just used my glue stick and I put it down right on top of that paper and that one was absolutely 100% finished. With this one that I had painted ivory, I went over it with Big Top because I wanted it sealed. It also helps the wax to be more easily managed. Like if you put antique wax or a black wax on over Big Top or over uh, just a clear wax actually, it will help it to where it wipes off more easily, if that makes sense. Okay, so what I did was used a little bit of Big Top. Then I used just the Waverly's Antique Wax. I put it all over that, and it came off just like I wanted it to. I'm going to use an old hymnal page, and I'm going to place this in the inside of this one. Then I had some of my transfers, and I got these transfers off of Amazon. They are in my Amazon store in case y'all want any, and these had birds on them. So I just cut out this little piece that had a bird on her nest, and I'm just going to place this down and do it the exact same way that I do my ILD transfers. You just peel off the white backing, lay that down, and use that little tool that ILD sends with all of their transfers, and you just kind of rub as you're pulling that transfer up. And that's all I did on this one. I hope you like these. Never thought it would be so hard. I grew up without a scar. Just living my life with no big worries. And I've always known what I want. Just didn't know what came along. Finding myself a much less happy Back in the days I used to dream about one day A life so amazing Have everyone judging me Don't wanna care about them Though it hurts so bad I wanna stay wide open if I shut down. The first DIY is caught in the carrot patch again. Now this one will be really easy to recreate. I got this farmhouse sign. I know it's flipped around backwards, but it's because the angle of my camera. You're not seeing things. But I got this farmhouse picture from the Dollar General store on clearance for like a dollar. And then that little silver bunny is one of the ones that comes off something at the Dollar Tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color this outer frame black. I really like that and I want to accentuate that difference in the black and white. And then there's some beads there in the middle. So I just took my time. I wasn't necessarily careful because you don't have to be too much right here. And I used that color called Ink by Waverly. And I just went all the way around the outside and then that inner rim there that you see on the inside part of the beads. I pulled the little burlap bow off my bunny rabbit and I'm also going to paint him that color called ink. And somewhere along the line, I painted the inside part of my picture with white chalk paint. Now, I didn't show myself painting it 
but remember it said farmhouse and stuff on it. And I just gave it two coats of the color called Vintage Linen, which is a DIY paint. I took a little pom-pom that I buy in a pack at Dollar Tree, and I'm going to pop that on his little tail. Then I got my Waverly Antique Wax, and I like the color that these beads are all the way around it, but I wanted to darken them up a little bit because I thought it looked better with that black and white. So I didn't have to be very careful because if you get that antique wax on the black part, it comes right back off. And if it doesn't look good, all you got to do is just do another quick little coat of that black. But it was perfectly fine. It was very easy. And you can see here, I'm not particularly being careful in any way. And I didn't wipe any of the excess off. I wanted to keep it that darker brown color on purpose. I grabbed some of my Starbond glue and then that accelerator. I sprayed a little bit of the accelerator on the white part of the picture, and then I put the actual glue, just a couple little dots, it didn't take much, just put a little bit there on the back of my bunny, and I'm going to stick him right down on that picture. And y'all remember that big old bag of the little um, bows that I got at Christmas time, the black and white and the red and white? I'm wearing out these black and white ones because they're so easy. All you do is pop them on. So I stuck that on my bunny's neck. And then I'm also going to stick a little bit of Spanish moss down across the bottom with some glue. And by the way, if you want some of those little... I got this fence at Hobby Lobby a couple years ago, and I have really used it a lot. This is the last bit of it that I have. It came in probably about a foot and a half, I guess, of this little fence. It was really cheap, and it's kind of made almost out of like popsicle stick material. It's just very small, but it's a good deal. If you find it, pick up some because it's good to use this time of year especially. But what I did was I just put glue on the last two little bits of the fence there and I glued it to my picture and I made it come out like 3D. Then I took two of those little carrots from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to paint those with my Arteza pens. Then the last thing I did is glued those little carrots down. This was super easy and I think it turned out beautiful. Let me know what you think about this one. The next one is a little bunny driver wreath. We're going to make a wreath out of the little trees that came out this year for Easter at the Dollar Tree. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two of them and I'm going to butt them up together. You want the back side to be flat and you're just going to butt them up together. And I like to use tie wraps to hold them down really well. I think I used two or three tie wraps. Now, I used a total of three trees, but you really don't have to. You could get away with using two trees because the tree is not even the main part of the wreath. It's almost like a just a filler, like a background. You know, it's not even the main thing. So the last tree, I just kind of laid it down where it would be a little bit on both sides, if that makes sense, where it would be on the left and the right side there a little bit. I spread it out real big, and I used my tie wraps to strap it down to. Then I just go ahead and cut off all that excess from my tie wraps so I can make sure that I don't forget to do that later. Now, the next thing I did here is I cut out 10 pieces of this ribbon and you can use whatever ribbon you choose. I cut my ribbon at 10 inches long because I dovetail all the ends. And once you dovetail the ends, you usually only have about nine inches, eight and a half inches left of it. And so that's why I go 10 inches with mine. So I go through and just dovetail all my ends off here. I went ahead and cut some other bows and I'm gonna show you what I did. Of course, this is the bow that I already showed you, the ones with the little truck on them that I cut at 10 inches. 
And then I also cut these little sheer kind of see-through ones from the Dollar Tree. I cut those 10 inches also. Now, I didn't even measure these, but if I had to guess, I would say they're about 10 inches. It's just a little cute little ruffle bow, and I got this at Hobby Lobby. It's when they were doing their 50% off of the bows every other week, and I only paid $2 for a big long roll of it, and I think it's a gorgeous spring color. This is just a little pink and white gingham bow that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I I also cut it at, actually I cut it at 8 inches. All of them are cut at 10 inches except for the little pink one and it's cut at 8. What I'm going to do is just take the very, it, just anywhere where I feel the need to and I'm just going to take this ruffly one and tie, just tie it around my, my little trees here. There's no need to worry about it coming undone or anything like that because that ruffle helps it hold its shape and hold itself together. And I just go up every few inches and put another one just anywhere where I feel the need to at this point, to be honest. I think I put five little ruffles on each side, five on the left and five on the right. I started off with just four, and then I thought, you know, I can add one more in there somewhere. And so I did, and I had five on the left and five on the right. And when I finished with all those ribbons, look how pretty and how much fuller this looks. Now, that blue color that the trees are is almost see-through. It's so light, but this brings a really pretty springy color to it. Now I'm going to slow this part down so it's a little bit more easy to understand. I'm going to use one of the bows that's got the little truck on it, one of the little sheer pink ones, and then this little skinny gingham one. All I'm going to do is lay them on top of each other, you see. I forgot to cut my little um, bow here. I didn't do it in dovetail. I just kind of cut it at an angle. All I do is just pinch it in the middle. I don't do anything else except for pinch it in the middle, and it's almost like a makeshift bow. And then I use the branches of the tree itself and just twist it around the center part of the little bow, and th that's going to hold it together. And here again, I'm doing the exact same thing. I put the three together, I pinch them in the middle, and then I'm just going to lay it down and just use the branches to wrap around and hold it there. I did four of these on each side, so I did a total of eight little packets, I guess you could call it, of the little bows. And you just put them wherever you think that they look good, but just remember, whatever you do on the left, you're gonna do it in the exact same spot on the right. So you'll see I put my bow kind of toward the end, so I did it on the opposite side in the exact same spot. But yeah, I just kind of evened them out where I thought they looked good, and I would put them down there. And I always just use the little trees itself to wrap it around, and it holds it perfectly fine because these are so full when you're finished that nothing really moves out of these little wreaths. I showed on the left side how I did my little bow packets, and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the right side, and I'll be right back. This flower was the closest thing that I could come to that minty color, so I'm going to show you how I fixed that in just one moment, but I'm going to do pink and this color of flower. What I did was I chose to get the color agave. It's a Waverly color, and it matches that the little truck that's on that bow, it matches it perfectly. So what I did was I took one of these little DIY kits. I buy these at the Dollar General store. This one was $2. It's the little truck with the eggs in the back, and it comes with a little stand where you can stand it up. So I just went through and painted my little truck the agave color. And here's how I remedy the problem with the flowers not matching up. I took that color agave and I literally just painted right over the color that was on them 
and then I used a baby wipe to kind of wipe off any of the excess, and also I used that baby wipe to kind of rub it in, and that way the flowers turned out the color that I wanted them to, and in some of them, I just kind of barely like dry brushed over them so that they would have that greenish color, but also the agave in order to tone it down and kind of make it look a little bit more realistic, I used my DIY white wax and my fingers, and I just rubbed a little bit of that wax on the petals, and then I used a baby wipe to kind of wipe it off. And that little bit of moisture was just enough to move the color around, and it just made it look right. And I also put the DIY white wax on my truck because I'm not a fan of the agave color myself, but when you tone it down a little bit with that white wax, I really do like that color because it's kind of calmer and it's not so in your face. I took some really skinny popsicle sticks and I'm just going over them with the antique wax and wiping off the excess with the baby wipe. And I painted my little egg in the middle, kind of like a bright purple, and the two on the side, a really light pink color. And here, I'm just using a Sharpie to do the wheels on the truck. I probably have a strange way of doing with my little Sharpie there on the wheels, but I have to just kind of slowly go around in a circular pattern to where I think the wheel would be. <laughs> And it's just my way of trying to figure out how to make it look right. And then I also went all the way around my little truck with my black Sharpie and just outlined the whole thing. I used my hot glue gun to put the little popsicle sticks on the back of the truck to make it look like it was rails. And I was having trouble with my glue gun, so just bear with me here. I was having one of those crafting days that like no matter what I did, something would happen or I was doing something wrong. Now, so I took this little, um, this is a little picture from off the back of one of those calendars. And it's a 2022 farmhouse calendar and it had a little truck on it with flowers and I just used a glue stick to put it down to the side of my truck because I felt that it needed something. And then I made two more of the little small popsicle sticks and I'm gonna put them on the side because instead of framing the whole thing, I just thought that this looked better to just put it on the sides. And it looked like what a real truck looks like to me that we see in the south here. Now it's time to put the little truck on our wreath. And what I did was I just flipped my truck over, I put a lot of hot glue down, and then I laid down one of those little tie wraps, and then I'm gonna use a couple of small pieces of a popsicle stick, and that glue is going to help it to hold, and it's going to be able to hold that little tie wrap there in place to where all I have to do is flip my little wreath over and just tie wrap it right on there, and it's perfect. You don't want to make it too tight because you'll lose your little truck and you want it to kind of pop out. So that's all I did, and then I fluffed everything up really well, and I still felt like it was lacking something at this point. So what I did was I cut off 10 inch pieces of tulle and okay, I have to say it the funny way, toile, okay, y'all always make fun of me and mess with me for the way I say it, but I just, that word is so aggravating to me. But anywho, we're not here to talk about that. So I cut this into 10 inch pieces and see, I just walk it down with my fingers. That's all I'm doing and pinching it in the middle. And then I just kind of randomly put it all over this wreath, not just behind the truck, which I did go heavy behind the truck. I probably put about four pieces behind the truck, but I also went throughout the wreath and added a couple pieces, maybe two on each side. So I added two more to the left and two more to the right. Now I have these little Easter bally eggy things. I'm not sure what they are. Um, they're in the floral section and I'm going to stick those in behind the truck here. So what I did is just cut them off and right here I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to put them or where, you know, how they're going to look right. I first just had them right there behind the little truck and 
it just didn't settle right with me. I didn't feel like that was the right placement for it. So where I actually ended up putting them was on the sides of the wreath. I put two little bunches of them on the left-hand side and two little bunches on the right-hand side. And there was actually a total of five little stems on that. So after I put two on each side, I had one more little stem left over and I did stick that one in behind the truck just for a little, you know, added effect. I took this little bunny rabbit head on a skewer and I cut the very tip of the skewer there where just the head and just a little bit of the skewer is left. And I'm going to glue him there to the very back of the truck like it's gonna look like he's driving the truck. So what I did was put down my glue, flip it over, and then I'm just going to put down a piece of fabric over the top of that, and that way that fabric is going to help it to grab onto the glue and hold there. Then the very last thing I did is take some of these little sparkly, I guess it's like a little sparkly, like glittery grass, and I put it kind of, you know, cock-sided, I guess you could call it there, at the top of the bunny to where it's kind of coming out from behind the little truck. And I hope you like this one. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my day. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at blues. No, I don't care because I am on my way up and I won't. Stop, I won't slow down Steady on my feet, I'm gonna rise up No, I won't stop, it is my time Cause I know what it's like to be broke I know what it's like when nothing goes your way So I'm gonna let myself enjoy This is gonna be two simple shelf sitters and I used some wood that I actually had this wood just left over in some of my scrap wood, but they do sell this exact same size wood at the Dollar Tree where they sell the little wood pieces in the craft section. I had already painted these orange from a previous DIY. I use these all the time, and I love to have a couple little shelf sitters just sitting out for each little holiday and stuff. And so I took my Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to give it a couple coats and just coat both of these little shelf sitters really well. I had a little piece of rice paper that I was going to use for a previous DIY and I didn't use it. So I had already used that water technique where I go around it with my the end of my paintbrush wet and then I just tear it because... You never use scissors or have any kind of straight lines or anything like that when you want to decoupage. Now, since this is rice paper, I just used my liquid patina, and it was so super easy just to get it to stick to the front of my little shelf sitter. And you can see this is Peter Rabbit, which is one of my very most favorite uh, little cartoons from Easter when I was a kid. I just took some of that chick ribbon that you get from the Dollar Tree. They have it out right now. And I'm just going to place that along the top and the bottom. And I'm not really sure why, but I placed a little bunny rabbit on the top. It's just a little bunny that I got in a pack at um, Hobby Lobby a few weeks ago. And then I'm going to use this little burlap bow. The burlap bow came off of that little silvery bunny that we used earlier. And I put my little button in the middle and this is just a little column that I got at the thrift store there was a pack of four of them for like 50 cents and I thought that they would be perfect to use where I could just set something up or whatever I wanted to do with it and so I glued this sweet little shelf sitter right on the top of that and that way one of them will be raised higher than the other and that's all there was to this one now we're going to start on the other one for the other one, I'm going to rob this little stand-up bunny that I got from the Dollar Tree. I cut his ears off and I cut his little feet off. And we are going to use this to make a little makeshift shelf sitter that's a bunny rabbit. I just simply glued those ears down to the very top of my little block.
and I just used my little Sharpie to make two small little bunny eyes here in the center. And I laid the two little felt feet down the way I wanted them, put some glue on them, and I set that right on the top so that it would be stuck right on there the way I wanted it. And I'm just gonna use a few strands of jute twine. I think there's three strands and I just used the, you know, three strands and glued it in the middle. That way that it would be little whiskers. I'm going to use this little upside down heart. It came in a pack of different little heart stickers and stuff from the Dollar Tree and that's gonna be his little nose. And I wanna make a very simple mouth on him. Well, first I made little eyebrows, and for the mouth, I just made like a straight little line and a little circle to make it look like he had like a what kind of expression. And I'm gonna show you the easiest way in the world to make a bow, or it is to me. I just make two little circles or little loops with my bow, and I tie those just like you would shoes or, or anything else that you tie. And that is the most simplest little bow that you can make. You just use your fingers to make the little loops, and that's, it's very simple. And then you just kind of pull it to the length that you want it. And I decided to make this a little girl bunny, and this is going to go right in the center of the little ears, and it's going to be her little hair bow. I just cut the sides off. I didn't dovetail them. I just cut it at an angle. And then I'm going to use a little pink button that's going to go right in the center because she's got to have a little button. Then the very last step, I used a white permanent marker to make two little dots at the bottom of her black eyes. And there they are. I hope you like these simple little shelf sitters. The very last one is a spring ducky, and it's more of a hack than it is a DIY or a craft. I got this little duck. I actually got it at a yard sale about a year ago, and I haven't done anything with him. He's a perfect little spring duck. Look how cute he is, but I don't like how bright he is. I love the colors that's on him. I love the little yellow coat, and I love his little bow and his little umbrella, but I wanted to tone it down. So if you have something like this and you just kind of want to tone it down, it might be too bright or vivid for you, all you have to do is take some DIY white wax and then I just rubbed it all over or I used my brush and brushed it all over this little duck and I just took a napkin and kind of wiped it off. Now, you have to leave it alone for about, probably about 15 minutes for, it, for the wax to kind of just... It starts setting up. I think it takes about 24 hours before it's fully like cured. So I just don't touch it too much. But in about 15 minutes, it was very easy to move around. And that's all I did on this guy. And like I said, it's just a little hack. There are so many simple things that you can do with your old decor that you already have. Pull it back out and use it. Just change it up a little bit if you're not happy with the way it is. And I hope you like this little duck. I think he's sweet, and now I can use him in my home. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would love to ask you to hit that little red button and subscribe and become a part of our family. And please give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I wanted to take just a moment to brag on one of my sweet subscribers that sent me a set of coasters that she made for me. Look how cute these are. Two of them are chickens. One's a little cow. One is Jesus. And look at this. That's my sweet baby, Sabby. Oh, I cried whenever I saw that because I wasn't expecting it. And then the other one is my new baby, Roxy. But the one of Jesus was on the top. 
and I was just really busy, so I wasn't able just to get right into them right off the bat. But when I flipped it over and saw the picture of Sabby, I was like, oh my gosh, and it just... I just love you guys so much. And Miss Penny, I thank you so much for sending me these. You don't know what that did. I will use these for the rest of my life. And that's a perfect conversation piece for anybody that comes over to my house. And I've been pulling out my old spring decor and doing some upcycles on it. And I've been doing some thrift flips. I hope that this helps you find some inspiration for some thrift flips and upcycles in your own home. We're going to start off with this beautiful decorative plate that I got at Goodwill. I'm not sure how much I paid for it because I'd already taken the sticker off the back. I had accidentally spilled some paint on it before, but today we're going to upcycle it and make it something really nice that I can use for my spring decor. I'm going to color it with Gravel Road by DIY Paint. I did two full coats of the Gravel Road all over this piece to start off. I love how the DIY paint dries a lot lighter. Look, you can see right before your eyes the transformation and how beautiful this color is. The first thing I did was I took my Kindest Regard stamps, and these are IOD stamps, and we're just going to put our stamp down on here. I just want it in the center part. Now, if you're looking for any of these supplies that I show in my videos, the stamps or the DIY paint and so many other supplies, I want you to visit Miss Lori at www.miltonsdaughter.com. I leave everything in the description box below because she is excellent to help you with any questions you may have, and she has all the great supplies that I use. So all I did was just flip my Kindest Regard stamp over, and I, like I said, I just wanted it in the middle, and if you'll see there, I got a little bit on the end, so I just ran right back over that with one quick coat of the gravel road. The DIY paint is so thick, it just covered it right up. I'm going to take this transfer that I got off of Amazon, and it is linked in my Amazon store. It's a bunch of different bunny rabbits. And if you've never done a transfer before, you just take that backing off, you lay it down, and it's almost like a sticker and you use that little tool that they send you and you just rub it all across where you're going to put your image and then you pull it up and you've got your beautiful bunny image. I love to use transfers for a quick up cycle or a thrift flip. You can never go wrong when you're using a transfer. Then you just use that little backing that comes off of it and rub it over the top and that's called burnishing it and it just helps it to hold on really well and stick on there. I'm going to seal this with a Dixie Belle clear wax and you do have to seal the DIY paint and what I wanted to do is put down the clear wax first because I'm going to use a dark wax over this and if you put a clear wax down first it helps to be able to control that dark wax where it just won't be so much. You can take it off a little bit easier if you need to take some off. And I'm using some of my favorite DIY black wax, and I just add it all around my picture, except for where the bunny is there in the center. Then I'm just going to use a paper towel and kind of wipe off the excess. And like I said, with me putting that clear wax down first it helps to take off where i've got a little bit too much and just control that black wax a little bit better so it's not too dark i also ran a little bit on both sides of the bunny i didn't want to get it over the bunny because he's white and i just didn't want to mess him up i wanted him to kind of pop out from that picture and then I just used my finger to go around on all these little, like, knobs or <laughs> little divots and dentions there that's all around. And then there's this beautiful, like, floral design all the way around my plate. And I just kind of used my finger and just a little bit of that black wax and went around it to accentuate that part even more and make it pop even more. I think this turned out awesome. What a great way for a quick little thrift flip. Let me know what you think about this first one.
second best Scared to risk what the future might bring What the future might bring I hold my breath Waiting for someone to knock at my door Now let's get into our next DIY. I have so many bottles laying around and bottles are an easy way to spruce up your decor, stick some flowers in them and make them beautiful. Well, we're gonna do some decoupage on this bottle. Now I picked this beautiful napkin and I'm gonna show you the big boo-boo that I made because I like to leave my boo-boos in here so that you don't make the same boo-boo, okay? Now, what I like to do is I like to paint my bottles with chalk paint because it always helps, it stays on there better and I'm gonna use this sponge dauber. It's just easier for me to use the little dauber because you just daub it up and down and it creates a texture on your bottle that won't just come off so easily. And it also helps that decoupage. So what I do is I just use my white chalk paint by Waverly. And I'm going to go all around this bottle. And I'm going to color it by just kind of using this little dauber and bopping it up and down. I did the whole bottle and all the way up around the top. I've got this gorgeous napkin with these little birdies on it, and I'm going to use the DIY liquid patina as my decoupage agent. Now I'm gonna use just a little small paintbrush and a little bit of water on the end of it to get the pattern off the way that I want it. You know if you've been around my channel long, I don't do straight edges. To me, that just looks very unnatural, and I like it better with a little jagged edge. But the first thing I'm going to do real quick is put a little bit of liquid patina on my fingers to pull those plies apart of that napkin. So what I do is use that little paintbrush and my water and go around the area that I want to tear off, and it just wets it just enough to where you can tear it off. I always just squirt a little bit of water on my mat, and since I'm going to use this whole napkin, I still have to go around the very edges and make it kind of jagged. Because like I said, we don't do straight edges. But see, that little bit of water is just enough for me to be able to just take the edges off the way that I want to. And when I got to this part, this is where I realized that I had got the wrong side of the napkin. I wasn't paying good attention to the napkin when I picked what sides I wanted. Okay, what I'm talking about is you see that line across the top that has that beautiful yellow pattern. I wanted that whole pattern on my little bottle. But what I should have done instead of doing the napkin horizontal like I did is I should have done it vertical. I should have only had one little piece of that napkin because it made the birds actually go sideways. I know that probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you, but just know that I picked the wrong side. I cut off the wrong side and it made the birds sideways and it wasn't going to work. So what I ended up doing was getting two pieces of a napkin instead of one whole napkin being together the way that I wanted. But it's okay. It still turned out in the end. It was fine and you could never tell that it was actually two napkins pieced together. So here we go and I picked the two that I did. And I got in a big old hurry and forgot to take the backing off of the one that I just had to, you know, peel apart. So, there's another boo-boo that was made. So, here we go. We're going to put this sucker down and I'm going to show you how I decoupage it on here. When it comes to using your Mod Podge or your liquid patina on a napkin, less is more. Now, I use my little paintbrush and I put very, very little on there. If you put too much, it's going to make that napkin too wet and it's going to tear and it's just not a good thing. So I put very little and I always start out from the very center of the napkin. See, I put so little on there that I could peel it off if I needed to. But I just start at the center of the napkin and kind of run my fingers up and down it. And my holy grail for making sure that you don't have any bubbles or wrinkles is that saran wrap. 
You have to use your saran wrap if you don't want bubbles or wrinkles. But I just kept going all the way around and I used my little saran wrap to work out any bubbles and wrinkles as I go. If you just use your fingers instead of the saran wrap, that napkin is going to stick to your fingers because the Mod Podge or the Liquid Patina or whatever decoupage medium you're using is very sticky. It's going to stick to your fingers and you don't want that. So you need to have you some saran wrap in your hand. That way you can just work out those bubbles and touch it after you get the napkin put down. And you will not have any bubbles or wrinkles, I promise, if you just go slow and you use that saran wrap. And you see how I'm just working out any bubbles or wrinkles. The heat from your fingers works like an iron. And with that saran wrap, it's like it just irons out any bubbles. And I always use that phrase, it, your, the, your fingers work like an iron. But really, it does. And the practice makes perfect on this decoupage thing. Now, this side of the bottle turned out beautiful. The other one did too, but I accidentally left that second ply on the back and it creates bubbles and wrinkles because that bottom layer is the one that's sticking on and the top layer is just kind of floating there in space. But yeah, so I'll go around and make sure that my edges are on really good. And I give it another quick go over to make sure there's no wrinkles. How many times did I say that? And you'll notice how I'm really taking my time and going slow on this area. And then the other day, I was watching my friend Brandy at the DIY Struggle, and she was talking about how she uses a sponge, you know, to, to put her parts down here. And I thought, well, that's genius because I always use the saran wrap. But hey, if you use a sponge, think about it. It's going to soak up any of that Mod Podge that comes through that napkin, so you're not going to have an excessive amount. And it just is so much easier to use your little sponge, but just make sure you use that sponge and that saran wrap, and I promise you'll be okay. Now, this is the piece of napkin that I forgot to take that second ply off of. And it still worked out okay, but let me show you what happened. I put down my very, very little bit of liquid patina, and then I start from the center there. And then I'm going to go all the way around it with my little sponge. And like I said, the sponge is going to help soak up any of that Mod Podge that we need to use. And I can also put Mod Podge or the liquid patina, which is what I use, on my little sponge and use it from the outside of that napkin and it soaks right through. And then I go right over it with that saran wrap to make sure that there's no bubbles and, and no wrinkles. I went all the way around with my little napkin and I did the exact same thing as I did on the first one. I used my sponge and my little saran wrap. I got the edges sealed in and it wasn't until I had this whole napkin on that I realized that I had two plies on there. And this is how I found out. If you look closely, I know it's kind of hard to see, but there was wrinkles and I could not figure out why the saran wrap was not getting the wrinkles out. And I thought, what is going on? It was getting most of the wrinkles out, but it wasn't doing like, like if you decoupage often, you know that something's just not right. And I kept thinking, why can I not get these wrinkles out? And see the wrinkles? You can really see them around the bird there. But I just worked on it and worked on it to try to get the wrinkles out the best I could. But I had already realized my mistake that I left two doggone plies on there. So when I got finished with this, what I like to do is go around with my little dauber again at the top of the napkin and at the bottom and you actually go on the napkin a little bit, if you so desire. You don't have to do that, but I did. And here I am fooling with those wrinkles again. I just, it just blew my mind because I'm one of those ones that I always make sure that I've got my backing off. But it threw me off when I had to swap over and get another piece of napkin. And I just totally got in too much of a hurry and forgot to take that backing off of that second napkin. So I like to go around here and just make sure that everything blends in right. 
and I'm just going over it with that little dauber once again. Now, I'm going to do another bottle since I kind of messed this one up a little bit. The bottle still turned out beautiful, but I was mad at myself, okay? I'm just going to be honest. And so, I do another bottle in a moment the right way. Now, I bought these little lights off of Amazon, and they go specifically in wine bottles. I have a friend that just keeps me loaded up with wine bottles all the time, so I have an overabundance of them, actually. So, I bought these little lights, and they're specifically for the wine bottles. They go right down in there, and it's like a little cork that you can flip on and off, and it's the lights, and it's going to make this bottle so pretty. So, all you do is just push your lights down in there and then flip it on at the top. And I'm going to show you what it looks like with the lights off and on. Let me know what you think about this first bottle. I was counting my blessings. I felt beaten down. I was looking for a calling. Felt lonely in a crowd. I was searching for the answers. Too blind to see the Now we're going to start on our second bottle. And I went really slow on that first bottle so that you could get the technique down. And this second one's going to go much faster. So the first thing that I did was just use my little a piece of sponge here and I'm daubing it all on. I have a little helper with me. Kaysen was helping me out do this part. But it's so easy that a four-year-old can do it. You could say that. But here we are just putting the paint on and daubing it on the little wine bottle. The next thing that I'm going to do is put a little bit of water on my brush. And this time I'm definitely going to make sure that I get the correct bunnies going the correct direction. And then I just tore off that backing and I realized that this one has two backings on it. So I made sure to take them off and then I go all the way around the edges because we don't do those straight edges and just put a little bit of water all the way around the edges piece off to make it just torn. I put a little bit of the liquid patina on my fingers to make sure that I have that backing off and believe you me, I made sure that I had the backing off. And one way that you know that you have the backing off is if there's a white, mostly white on the napkin, it's very, very see-through like this one is. Now, this one is much smaller than the other napkin, but I wanted to use this one because it was so pretty. And this one is going to be one piece of a napkin instead of two. We're just going to wrap it right around this bottle, and it went around it at a perfect circumference where I didn't have to take any of it off and once again I'm just going to put some of the liquid patina on my little sponge and put it down on the bottle and then I lay my bunny because he's the center of the bottle I'm just going to lay him down starting off in the center make sure that I use that saran wrap and honestly, when you're putting your Mod Podge on it doesn't really matter if you use a brush or a sponge at first because I just use very, very little. That's the main thing is to use just a little bit of that product. I like to brush mine on with the brush and then use the sponge later to soak up any kind of excess. So I'm just using my sponge and my saran wrap and going around and putting this beautiful little guy all on this bottle. Like I always say, the key to making sure that your decoupage is successful is to use that saran wrap, use that sponge, and just take your time and don't use too much of your Mod Podge or liquid patina. Just be careful and you can do this, I promise. And so I worked with this little bottle because one of the sides had a little bit more wrinkles than the other. But it's okay. I just used my saran wrap and I got it out. And it was because this napkin was so very thin, it just wanted to wrinkle up on me. 
but you just take your time and you work with it. And if any of your white comes off the paint that you normally put on, it's okay because remember we go right back over it when we're finished with our little sponge and we just daub a little bit more paint on it to make it look like it's all one cohesive piece. And since there was such a big gap on the top and the bottom of this bottle, I felt like it needed something else. And jute twine is always the easy solution to put on there. So I have this jute twine that I got from, I think I got it from a thrift store to be honest with you. And it's a brown and white kind of striped motif. I don't know. So I just put a little bit of glue at the bottom of my bottle and I started winding that jute twine up to where I thought that it looked good at the very top. And Kaysen was bringing me peace offerings as I was going. All kinds of little eggs and saying, Gran, look what I found. And <laughs> I was just trying to get this done. And, and I hope you guys like the way it turns out. I also felt like it needed some jute twine at the top. So I added some at the top, just like I did along the bottom of the bottle. And then, after I had wrapped that part, don't you know that the neck of the bottle looked naked to me? So I thought, okay, what are we going to do here? And so I just added a little bit more of that jute twine up at the top of that. And then I made sure to get a lighter and burn off all those little fuzzies. But you have to be careful because remember, that napkin is paper. Now... You know me, if this bottle was to catch on fire, I'm going to grab that thing and chuck it out of my craft room real fast. But just be careful and make sure you have something to put out of fire. It's, it's never happened to me, honestly. And I go crazy with it, and I do a lot of flames because I like that darker look. But just be careful and just know your surroundings and what you're doing there. I'm going to add just a little bit of glue and a little flour to the side because I thought that this flower just added something to the bottle, plus it was the same color as the little flowers that's in the bunny picture. And then I'm just gonna add a little sprig of lavender right up above that to complete this little bottle. And Kaysen keeps adding that little blue flower that don't match anything in this world to the top of the bottle, but I let him do it because I wanna make that baby happy. When I took it out, he'd put it right back in. Up there too. Oh yeah. It fits up there. Put the blue one back up there. Okay. See? It works. <laughs> Yay. And I popped one simple little pearl inside that flower to top it all off. The next one is an upcycle. This little bunny, after I had spray painted him, you could still see a crack that was in the side of him. Now, nothing was out. It was just a little crack in the, he's made out of ceramic. So, he was yellow to start off with, and I spray painted him white. Now, here is a simple way to cover up just a little crack. All I have is some of that Waverly white chalk paint, and you know chalk paint's thicker, and I'm gonna use this little sponge and just daub it all around this bunny rabbit, and it covered that crack up, and you could never even tell that it was there. Now, in most cases, if you have something like this, you would just throw it out or get rid of it, but why not just upcycle it and just cover up that little crack and use him just one more year and see how long he lasts. The first thing that I did was take some transfers that I had got back in the fall. Now these transfers are on in my Amazon store. And to be honest with you, I don't recommend these transfers because they crack a lot. And I mean, there is just no better transfer than an IOD transfer. Every time that I use the IOD transfer, I know that there's never, ever going to be a problem with it. But I got these off of Amazon, and I don't like them as well. Now, I had these back in the fall, like I said, so I had forgotten that they kind of crack a little bit. But me and Kaysen was just going to put this little pink flower 
on the little bunny's bottom here, and that way he would have a little something added extra. I did this transfer just like I do any other transfer. You lay it, you pull the backing off and lay it down on the object you're gonna put it on and just use either the little scraper tool that they send you, or in this case, I just used my fingernail because it was an odd shaped surface and it just seemed better to do it that way. Then I had taken some little floral foam and put it inside that tiny little hole on the bunny's bottom. And I'm just gonna add some simple florals to this, very small little bits of florals. I cut these pieces off from this stem that I got at Dollar Tree, and it's called Greenery. It's got all these beautiful different types of florals in it, and it's my favorite greenery that comes from the Dollar Tree. I also added some of these stems from a different floral that I had, and I'm sure that I got these at Hobby Lobby. I'm not, I don't really know what they're called. They just have little purple buds on them, and they're really pretty. And then I decided to add that little bit of that yellow that comes from that stem called greenery. And I just felt like it needed something else. And I noticed that those little transfers had a butterfly on them. And it's a little pink butterfly that matches that flower perfect. So we're going to put this kind of right over where those flowers are on his little bottom. I just felt like this didn't look right for some reason with the purple and the yellow little florals. So I just kept picking and poking around until I actually got it the way that I thought it looked good. I ended up taking all of the yellow out where there was just a little bit of purple that matched that pink on the bunny's bottom. And that's how simple it is to take some of your old decor and spruce it up and make it beautiful and new again. I hope you like it. Of when we used to dance, but now I don't know where you are. I miss you so bad, won't you come back to me? I've got you in my head, you're all that. This last one is the simplest of all of them. I got this beautiful cutting board. It's got little feet on it from Hobby Lobby back in the fall when all of their spring stuff was 90% off. I only paid like $2 for it and it's gorgeous. Now, for some reason, I didn't have the camera rolling when I put the little transfer on here, but it's a transfer from the POTS. It's called the Traditional POTS Transfer Book and it's got all these beautiful black transfers, white transfers, and blue transfers. And they are all like a label looking transfer to me. And I picked the little birds for the spring and then I put some words underneath them and I didn't feel like it was enough. So I actually did show myself putting this last one on there. And this one is just a piece of a transfer that came out of that same book, but it doesn't belong to the bird picture, but it just goes to show that you can use bits of pieces with all these IOD transfers and it all comes together and looks perfect. Now, I'm just adding this last one, and that's pretty much all I did to this was add the transfer from traditional pots. And Miss Lori at Milton's Daughter does sell these transfers, by the way. She sells all of the IOD, all of the DIY paint. Most of the materials that I use in my videos comes from Lori's store. So that's all I did to this one, and I hope you like it.
If you stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you very much. And I appreciate each and every one of y'all. And I'm sorry that I got this video out a little bit late. But I do have a special guest for y'all that I hope that y'all will enjoy. And God willing, I'll see you back here Monday at 6.30. Have a blessed weekend, y'all. Hey, y'all. It's your favorite cousin, Cousin Bobby Joe Wombo, coming in to say hello on this fine, chilly day. You know, I thought it was already springtime. I've been wearing my short pants and everything else. I even jumped in the creek one day to take my bath there. But you know what? It got cold on us again. This morning it was 30 degrees and I about froze my big old tush off. But anywho, I'm not there to talk about this, but let me tell y'all what happened to me this week. Oh my goodness. And no, I didn't go to jail. <laughs> Welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy, 
I'm the owner and creator behind Kit's Vintage Farmhouse here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I am so happy and thankful that you stopped in to spend some time and craft with me today. This week, I've been working on some simple and easy things that I like to take to the springtime craft shows, and I just wanted to show them to you in case you might want to sell some of your own crafts, or even if you don't, even if you just like to craft, we're going to have a good time together. So let's jump into this video and get to crafting. The very first one is going to be an egg cloche. I found this gorgeous egg cloche at the Target dollar spot for $5 and I thought it was well worth it. It's really made well. It's beautiful. I'm also going to use this rice paper. I'm going to use a slim candle and I'm going to use some of the little moss bunnies that come in the pack of three from the Dollar Tree. If you guys have been around my channel for any length of time, you know I love to take my candles, the battery operated kind, and I like to put rice paper or napkins on them. So here I picked out which piece of rice paper I'm going to put on my little candle, and I just wet all the way around the image because you know you never cut out around these images. It just looks so much better whenever you don't do that. And I've been really liking lately that I can just use glue stick. Also, if I want to pull this off for the next season and put a different piece of rice paper on there, I can do so. So I just add this glue stick all over the back of my rice paper, and I'm just simply going to stick it on there. Now, when I do this, if I want to keep this like forever, I would seal it with a Mod Podge or a liquid patina. But like I said, I like to change them out every season. And you know that the glue stick, it just goes away, or the purple goes away. So it's very easy just to pull this rice paper off and put another piece on for the next season. And this is all I did was just lay it on there. I love to decoupage with rice paper because it's so super easy and you don't get any wrinkles. I just kind of start off from the middle and work my way outwards so I don't get any wrinkles. And I have two of those little styrofoam eggs that came from the Dollar Tree. One is like a lime green color and one is white. And I'm just going to leave them the color they are and not paint them. I'm just going to take a tiny little rose and some little flowers from one of the little pieces of rice paper. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to put a little bit of my glue stick on the back of my rice paper and place it on the egg here and it just sticks to this styrofoam beautifully. And you'll see with this egg, there is a little area, because the egg is curved, it was a little hard to get it down without getting a wrinkle, so I just cut a little slit in it and then lay both of the pieces down, and you never notice that's the beauty of decoupaging is because you can hide things like that when you're doing it on curved surfaces. Now we're just going to simply put this beautiful egg close together. I took just a little bit of the Spanish moss, and I like to use the real Spanish moss. I just think it looks prettier. I put a little bitty bit of glue down. I placed my candle in the back, and I did put some glue on the bottom of my bunny so that he would stay on there. And then I'm just going to lay my eggs close together because I didn't have a lot of room at the bottom, you know, where the cloche lays down into the little divot there and I definitely wanted it to close right and look beautiful and the only thing that I added that I didn't show on here was I literally pulled off one little tiny piece of baby's breath and stuck it in behind the eggs and I hope you like this first one If you're enjoying the video so far, I'd like to ask you to hit the like button because it helps you to put me out there in front of people who've never seen my content before. And if you would, hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of our family here on YouTube. We would love to have you. This next one is called Singing to the Lord and you'll see why in just a moment. 
I'm going to start off with this thrifted Olin Mills frame that I found for 99 cents at the thrift store. And then I'm also just going to use some scrapbooking paper. And I was going to use this wooden bird, but as time went on, the craft evolved and I changed it up. But the very first thing that I'm going to do is lay down the back of this frame and cut out the shape on my paper here so it will fit right over the top. Now, you can do this craft and you can make it all your own. You can even use a dollar store frame. You don't have to use the exact same frame I have. You don't have to use a round one. But I do recommend that you use one and take the glass out of it or just get one that don't have the glass. And you'll see why here in just a moment. I think this turns out to be a beautiful craft and I hope you're going to like it. So I just cut my shape out that I needed to go on the back of my little frame here. Then I'm just going to take my Elmer's glue stick and I'm going to put it all over the back of this cardstock and I'm just going to lay it down on the backing there and then I'm going to use my little brayer to make sure that I've got some good contact. I absolutely love these frames. I got them for just 99 cents a piece and they were from Olin Mills and you know that they probably cost a lot of money back in the day. I don't like the color of it, so I'm going to paint it with the color plaster, which is Waverly, and I had to give it two and a half coats. Now, when I'm making my molds, if I have resin or clay left over, I go ahead and pour up molds and make the clay molds and just stick them in a baggie to the side. That way I can use them and not always have to make the molds right away. And that was the case for this. I dug through my little molds that I had and I found two pieces of clay molds here. These are just, they come off of the B mold, the IOD B mold, and they were kind of like a little string of flowers, if that makes sense, like a little line of flowers. And they were curved perfect to go in this. I also had two little birdies that I made out of resin and I'm going to use those also. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is take my tight bond wood glue, and I'm going to put these little floral pieces down. One of them had broke off into two pieces, but once you get it glued together and get it painted, you never even notice it. So I just went ahead and put all of my little pieces together on my frame the way that I wanted them. Then I'm gonna take the little backing piece. I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue, but I also added some of that tight bond wood glue so that I would get a really good strong bond on the back of this. I took the color Apothecary and it is a DIY paint. I'm going to paint my little birds with just one coat of this because the DIY paint is clay based and it literally only needs one coat. It is my favorite paint of any paint I've ever used. And if you guys are ever interested in trying some of this paint or trying any of the molds or some of the different things that I have in my video, the different supplies, I want you to go visit my friend Lori at www.miltonsdaughter.com and she will hook you up and tell you exactly what you need or help you to find what you need. Now right here, I'm just gluing two of those little cubes that come from the Dollar Tree down and I'm gonna glue my birds down here because I want them to kind of pop out and look like they're 3D. I had also taken some of the Waverly Antique Wax and painted the little branches that my birds are sitting on with that color, and I just love the way that these birds look in the green. I have different little stems and just little remnants of stems that I'm gonna be using. I wanted to use these little lavender the, just the little tiny flowers off of those that you see kind of in the middle of the stem. But I needed just a little bitty bit of the stem so that it would work. So what I had to do was cut these apart and kind of take them apart and reassemble them the way that I wanted them to go. You see, I'm just taking the little stem and I stick it right back down into the little flower part and then put my little purple lavender on the very top of it because if I would have left it the way it was, it was just way too long. And I had to cut it off so that it would look right. Now I thought it was really pretty to put the little leaves kind of all around the birds here. 
and I'm just taking the pieces apart and figuring out exactly how I want them on here. And then I'm just reassembling it, them the way that I need them to go. Then as I go along, I'm just gluing them down the way that they need to be so that they'll look right with my picture. In the middle of the birds here, what I did was lay down a piece of that boxwood that you get from the Walmart. And I just took the little purple lavender pieces that were the small little tiny pieces and literally glued them to the stems to make it look like it's growing on there. And you can't even tell the difference when you actually put it together. And I really like the way that this turned out. I think it's really cute this way. And I just love, love, love all the little different stems and flowers coming out around for my birds. I'm not sure what the name of these florals are, but I know that I got them at Hobby Lobby when they were half off. And the flower part looks like baby's breath, but the stem does not. It almost looks like a ornate grass or something and I really think this is pretty to add this in because I've got the lavender everywhere and I wanted just a little touch of white so I just kind of added them here and there onto my picture. I wanted to use some gray wax and I didn't have any so I'm going to make some. I'm using my DIY white wax, and I'm just gonna take this beautiful gray color called Gravel Road, and I'm literally just putting like a drop in my, my white wax and mixing it around, and it became this really light gray wax, and it's exactly the color that I wanted. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is take that color called Gravel Road, and it's a DIY paint, and I'm gonna go around and paint that floral embellishment, whatever you would call that, the little thing that I glued on there, the mold that I glued on. And then after I did that, I went all the way around my frame with that gray wax that I made, and I am just going to wipe off the excess with a little bit of a baby wipe, and I do it very, very carefully because I don't want much of it to come off. After the gravel road color had dried, I went over it with that gray wax also, and very carefully wiped off the excess. I did the exact same thing over my little birds because I love the way the white wax looks on their feathers. It brings out every single detail. Now I have some of these inspirational or religious type of stamps, whatever you would call them. I got them off of Amazon and I wanted to put one down on the bottom and it says, I will sing unto the Lord for he has been good to me. But I didn't want to just put it on there because it was a curved surface. So I got the idea to take one of my little tags, and it's just like a little paper tag. I used my purple ink, and I just cut it down to size. And what I'm going to do is place this on the very top, and I'm going to put one of those cubes on the surface that is flat up there, and I'm going to glue it right on the top. And I hope you like this one. It's very simple and easy and very beautiful. Come to the water where you will find peace. Take a step into the river and get down on your knees. Come to the mountain. We'll take it in the view. You will find This one is a bunny book stack. It's been a while since I've done a book stack, and I came across this one at the Dollar Tree. Um, it was a Valentine's Day, and I'm going to use this light yellow color. I don't remember the name of it, but it's a folk art color, and it's called Sunny Something, but I cannot remember the name. In the middle, I'm going to use the color Apothecary, which is my favorite green color. And then on the bottom, I'm going to use the DIY color called Prom Queen. And I've made sure to go all around the books and paint all the way around. 
I went to my Cricut and I made the little words that's going to go on here and it says bunny kisses and springtime wishes. I used a font called snail round bound or I know the first word was snail. Do not use this font if you're going to do it like on a book stack or something because it was so thin it didn't want to you know what I mean sometimes you can use fonts that are so thin they're very hard to get off of the tape but I wrestled with it for a while and I made it work and then I just used my black ink color by Waverly and I just went in the cracks so that it would really accentuate that it's a book I took one of these little bunnies that comes out at the Dollar Tree every year and I'm going to give him one coat of the DIY color called Gravel Road it is a beautiful gray color, and when it dries, it's very light, very, very light, and really pretty. Once I got him all dried off, I went over him with my DIY white wax, and then I'm just going to wipe off the excess with a paper towel. I took some bunny ribbon that I got at Dollar Tree, and I got this in the dollar section, or, or I'm not sure what you call it. It's the $5 section, actually, and it was $3 for the spool of ribbon. Now, I put one piece around the book at the top, and then I just made a simple bow that's like a bow tie where I literally just pinch it in the middle, and I'm going to glue it down kind of toward the back and candy catty corner on my books. Then I took my little bunny rabbit and I'm going to glue him toward the front of my book stack. I take a couple of sprigs of my lavender and of this little floral that I get from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to tuck it underneath that ribbon that goes around my book and then I'm just going to make another little bow and this is how I make it. I literally make a circle with it and just pinch it in the middle. I'm going to place this one right in front of the other one. And I also had taken just a little scrap of the ribbon and tied it around the center part so that it would hide where I glued that together and tied it with the jute twine. Then I took two of these little wooden carrot pieces that you get from the Dollar Tree and I just used my Arteza markers to paint them orange and green. I'm going to place one of the carrots in the middle of the bow and the other one in the bunny's hand because for some reason he has his paw up like he's holding something. So I had to give him a little carrot and I hope you like this one. I think it's adorable. If you stuck with me through this whole video, I just want to say thank you so much for coming and spending some time with me today. And hopefully, now I can get my videos back on track and it's going to be every Monday and Thursday at 6.30. But if I do change that up, I will definitely let you guys know. And I love y'all. I've got a couple of little clips for y'all at the end of this and some bloopers. Miss Roxy had to show off her new beanie. I love you guys, and I will see you soon. Hey there, everybody. It's me, Cousin Bobby Joe. I hadn't been on here for a hot minute, so I thought I'd jump on and let you all know what I've been up to. You know I've been missing y'all so much, and you'd think that I'd make an appearance on my channel just a little bit more often. <laughs> Anywho, you will never believe what happened to me after Christmas. Oh my goodness. I've been sitting in the county jail since December the 25th. Guess what happened? All right. It was all on account of that Buford and Sally Ann. You know that after me and him got hitched last February 14th, Valentine's Day, that him and Sally Ann started some kind of little fling. I don't know what that was all about because everybody in town knows what kind of woman she is. 
But anyways, I went down to the DFW and I saw them two a dancing together. And so what I did was I played it real cool because I thought I wasn't going to get thrown in jail tonight, you know. <laughs> Little did I know. So I waited till they went out and got his pickup truck. I walked around to the side where Sally Ann was a sitting in my seat. And I pecked on the window. And that dummy had the nerve to roll her window down. So when she did, I just grabbed her old moppy hair and pulled her right out of the truck by the head of her hair. The hair of her head. <laughs> I get so tore up at talking about Sally Ann, I get my words all twisted. But anyways, I grabbed her with one hand by the hair of her head. I pulled her out of that truck about halfway is all I got her out because she's a hefty heifer, you know what I'm saying? I looked down and just so happened to see a Corona bottle laying on the ground. So I picked it up and the first thing that came to my head was hit her in the head with it. So I did. But when I hit her in the head with it, that heifer is so hard-headed that it broke. And it cut the back of her head. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Here comes the cops. Woo, 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 woo. Here they come. And they arrested me. Well, let me tell you what. And on account of Buford being my husband, he is the only one that could get me out of the county jail. Well, listen to this. I reckon him and Sally Ann just went all over the world together or something because he left me sitting in the county jail rotting. Oh, yeah. So guess what? When these big Hollywood agents from Hollywood come a-calling me and want me to be in their movies because of all these looks that I've got, he can kiss my big fat horse's patoot. He ain't getting a dime of my money. Oh, speaking of. We were having a beauty competition, and we have it right here in the Tennessee Holler where I live and come from, proud to be the reigning champion, okay? It's called Tennessee's Hottest Criminal. <laughs> yeah, baby! And you can win cars. Well, actually, it's a big old pickup truck, and it's got like a gun rack in the back of it so you can do your hunting and stuff. But anyways, you can win that, you can win flowers, you can win all kinds of stuff. So anyways, I got out of jail just in time to join in for the beauty competition because I am the reigning champion around these parts. And I will withhold my title. So, we haven't got in the results yet, but since I've been jailed four times this past year, I'm hoping that I will be the reigning champion. We'll find out in a few days and I'll let you know. But anyways, I just wanted to touch base with you and let you know what I've been doing. Oh, what is that you said? You wanted to know what happened to Buford and Sally Ann? Man, when I got out of jail, I did them up real good. But I can't talk about it on here because they'll put me back in jail. As of right now, they don't know who slashed their tars. <laughs> yeah, baby. I love you, and I'll see you real soon. Bye. Hey there, welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I am so happy and thankful that you stopped in to craft with me and spend a little time this evening. We're going to do some thrift flips using the new spring release from IOD, and we are going to have so much fun. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a big thumbs up, and let's jump right into the first one. I'm going to start off with a couple of little terracotta pots. 
I actually got these at the thrift store, but these are the ones that come from the Dollar Tree because they still had the wrapping on them. You can't fool me, but I got them a little bit cheaper than I would at Dollar Tree. And so what I'm going to do with the first ones is I just have some Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to kind of go over them with like a heavy dry brush. Actually, I just went over two and then I realized what I was going to do with these and I thought, why am I painting them? I don't even have to do that step. So we're going to move on to the next step. This is the first time since I got all of my IOD spring goodies that I'm going to be using the antiquity stamp. This stamp is amazing. It has these little small ones at the top that are almost like knob toppers and that you would put on a knob. And then it's got other ones that are the size that you would like put on pots. It's got some of the prettiest typo <laughs> typography on it. And I love the little puppy dog in the suit. He's adorable. So the first thing that I did was just took some of my DAS clay. That's my favorite clay that I've used. It's cheap. I get it on Amazon. It's in my Amazon store if you want it. And I love it. It's easy to work with. I just kind of warm it up in my hands a little bit. And then I'm going to lay it down and smoosh it out. I wanted to get it thin enough where I could use these stamps with it. I don't normally use my stamps in this way, so that's why I kind of challenged myself to try some things that I haven't tried before. All I'm doing here is I've got my brayer so I can just kind of thin out that uh, clay a little bit. And I picked this adorable one that has a little kitty cat on it, and it says, Miss Prius. I love that. If you're from the South... We call each other Miss Pris, okay? I don't know why, but we're like, hey there, Miss Pris. So I think that's the sweetest thing ever. But first, before I use my stamps, even though I'm not going to stamp with them, I'm going to go ahead and do this step so I don't forget it later. You go over it with a very light sandpaper. You, I go over it one direction and then the opposite direction, and they always say that that's the best thing to do before you use your stamps. So I ended up picking two of the larger sized one, the Miss Press baking soda. And then I picked two of these little small ones to go on those small pots. One of them had a chicken on it and the other one was just like typography. It was just writing. And then the other one that was larger, the size of Miss Press, was a rooster, which y'all know I'm into my chickens, okay? So what I did was I pushed down with my fingers into the clay and I got like a good grip on it and then I went over it with my brayer just to make sure I was really good and down inside that clay. It makes the most perfect like stamp you know in your clay and it's gorgeous and you can just cut out around it and that goes on your pot or whatever your project may be and it makes it look gorgeous every time. Since I had rolled out so much of my clay on the first one, I just went ahead and made two. I think the first one, I made it too thick, so I'm just learning as I go, and I'm just using like a blade that I have to go around and get the perfect shape cut out. And then the second one stuck to my silicone mat, so I had to start it all over and put down some wax paper. I had totally forgot to do this on wax paper with the first one, but since it was so thick, it came up easily. This one was a little bit thinner, so it stuck to my silicone mat. So the two things that I'm learning is to use that wax paper and try to make it a little bit thinner. Like, you just kind of know the consistency that you need as you go along, I guess is the best way I could describe that. Then I made the other two, which were the small ones, and I found that it was easier to use that blade while the stamp was still down on the clay and just kind of go around, you know, the stamp, and that way it came out perfect every time. Now we're going to use our Tight Bond Quick and Thick Wood Glue. That's my favorite method of putting any type of clay on anything. And you just put a little bit on the back and then place it on your project. And before I forget, if you guys want any of these stamps or any kind of projects that you see me using, most of my supplies come from Miss Lori over at www.miltonsdaughter.com. And Miss Lori is amazing when it comes to customer service. 
Like I've seen and heard her call people back before just to ask a question about an order. And in these days, nobody has that type of customer service. She's a small business and she is amazing. And I will not support anybody else except for Miss Lori. So go check her out if you want any of these IOD products, the DIY paint, some good paint brushes, you name it, she's got it. So just go check her out. She does rice paper and all that good stuff too. So see, I just use my fingers and very lightly push that up against my terracotta pot because I didn't want to mess up the stamp itself. And so I just put a little bit of tight bond, tight, tight bond wood glue on the back of every one of these and voila, stick it right on that terracotta pot and these are going to be so pretty out on my little patio. I knew that I wanted to use some of these beautiful florals on one of the flower pots. Now, this is from the transfer called Millet, M-I-L-L-O-T. It's probably the most popular transfer book of all the ones that have come out because it's got butterflies, it's got bugs, it's got like all kinds of just mushrooms. It's got everything in it, these beautiful florals. So it's got like small flowers and big ones. So the small ones were perfect to put on one of these little small pots. You know, you just cut out whichever transfer piece you want. You lay it down and you see here, I actually used my fingernail to scratch it off. And when you rub it off, it just comes off onto whatever project you are putting it on. And I wanted this beautiful floral scene on the front. So I just put a couple of different flowers there. I ran over it with a very light sanding sponge because I like to have that old vintagey look and it kind of scratches it up a little bit and I like that look. Now here I'm just taking some of the Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory and I'm just adding some baking soda to it to thicken it up. I put a lot of baking soda in there. I would say probably about a teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons even in just that little bit of paint. And I'm mixing it up because I want it really thick because if not, it's just going to look like a stamp stuck on the front of a terracotta pot. But if I kind of thicken the paint up a little bit and I pounce it like this, it causes it to be a little bit thicker and it doesn't look like it's two separate things. It looks like it, the pot is made that way. And I hope that makes sense. Now, the first one, I shouldn't have went over the stamp with that thicker paint. I should have just went over it with a thinner paint because it kind of messed up my picture, the Miss Pris baking powder, where you couldn't even see that, you know, the words on it as well as I would like for it to be. So the rest of them, I learned my lesson. Like I said, I'm learning as I go, and that's what I'm here for, is for inspiration so I can help you guys and you won't make the same mistakes that I make. Let me make them, <laughs> and it'll just make it easy on you. And so all the rest of these, I just went around, and you see I'm just pouncing that paint on them so that it will be good and thick. In my last video, I made up a bunch of little resin pieces from some of the molds, and I'm going to take this little simple ladybug that I made from the resin, and I'm going to stick her right on the side of the one that I put the flowers on. Today, I was so excited to get five different colors of DIY paint. I got petticoat pink, which is this beautiful light pink color, perfect for spring, and this French millinery. It is a beautiful, like lilac, purpley color. I've been waiting on that forever, and I finally got it. This color is crinoline. It's just an off-white color, and it's one of their most popular colors in DIY paint. Now, this one is one that's very popular called Farm Fresh. It dries so pretty, and the very last one is called Sea Glass. It's kind of another bluish color. It's really pretty. So these are my five new colors, and of course I wanna jerk one out and start playing around with it, but I wanna get into that French millinery really bad and put it on some of my beautiful terracotta pots. So I opened it up and the first one that I put it on was one of these little smaller ones that has the little round medallion different shapes on the front. And I went kind of heavy handed on that one. But on the second one, I just did like a good dry brushing technique all over it. 
and that color just is so beautiful guys and it dries down to a beautiful light color even lighter than it is here the next color that i want to jump into is crinoline now crinoline is almost the same color as that waverly color ivory that i was using but remember i told you that i made the mistake of going over that first one and i couldn't really read the miss priss's baking powder so what i did was use the crinoline to go around the others and always when i am putting my paint up i use vaseline go around the very tops of my paint and close it that way your paint never gets stuck i don't know if you've ever had a paint can that you can't open because the paint dried inside the little grooves oh honey it is so frustrating especially when you spent good money on that paint but i promise you if you put vaseline around the rim you won't have that problem now, I wanted to put a little color on these to make them look like they're old and vintage -y, And you know I had to do it. For the past three videos, I've been playing with this Tim Holtz Distress Spray. And y'all, I am so in love with the way that this squirts and makes those speckles. And I just wanted to see what it would look like on these little terracotta pots. And in one spot, I went kind of heavy. And then in a the few spots, I just kind of went a little bit. I take my paper towel and I just dab it. And that way it's going to go down in all those little creases just like I want it to on the front. And this one has got the chicken on the front. And it's really going to accentuate the chicken. And I love the way that the little speckles look all around it. It just makes it look like an old aged terracotta pot that's been sitting outside for a long time. So you know me, I liked it and I wanted some more. And so I added just a little bit of it to all my different pots because I wanted that speckled look. I really liked it. I even sprayed a little bit of it down on this wax paper just to kind of run it around the rim of a couple of them and to use my paper towel to kind of rub it in and just make it look like it's old and dirty because I like when flower pots look like that. Now, that's just my personal preference. If you don't like them to look like that, I'm just here for inspiration to kind of give you some ideas. So, if you don't like it that way, by no means you don't have to do it that way. But I absolutely love this stuff. I'm loving playing with all the different colors. I got a little package that had three different colors in it. And I just love playing with the different colors and just seeing what it does. I decided to take the two little purple ones, the ones that I did in that French millinery, and take a little bit of my DIY white wax. It's my favorite white wax ever. And I went kind of heavy with it on there and then just wiped it off with a paper towel because I didn't want too much of it to come off of there. Now, I didn't mind that I already had a little bit of that brown stain on my paper towel because to me, it made it look a little bit more old and vintagey, just like I wanted it to. Now, this one, I really went hard on that little area in the front where I put the clay. And I added a lot of the white wax because I love the way that looks. I took this Dixie Belle color that I have called Pumpkin Spice because I wanted to color that little ladybug. Now, our ladybugs in the south are an orange color, and sometimes they're a bright orange color but mine is gonna be like a little bit of a pumpkin spicy orange color. And then I took some of my black DIY wax, and I'm just going to go over that ladybug with this black wax, and then wipe off the excess with the paper towel. That way, that black wax is gonna go down in those little grooves of that ladybug, and she's gonna be black and orange, just like I know that the ladybugs around here look. And I was very satisfied with the way she turned out. Then after that, I just took some of my floral foam and I put it down in each of my little pots. And then I added some of that Spanish moss that I get from Florida. And after that, I just added these little stems that I got at Hobby Lobby. I didn't add too many. I just wanted a few of them in there. 
in three of my little pots, I added these cute little ceramic birds that I ordered off of Amazon. I think they were only about six or seven dollars, and there's six of them in there. They are so adorable, and they're tiny and cute. Y'all know I got mad at Dollar General because they made those little bluebirds I get every year a lot smaller. So I said, I'm going to show them, and I went and got some different birds. And I hope you like I'm this one. Down the street on clouds instead of the concrete I'm dancing through everything's about to come my way nothing can ruin my day no matter what anyone does or say I smile at fools no I don't care cause I am on my way up and I won't stop I won't slow down steady on my feet I'm gonna rise up no I won't stop it is my time what it's like to be broke i know what it's like when nothing goes your way so i'm gonna let myself enjoy the fruit from this lucky day if you're enjoying this content so far I want to ask you a little favor. Would you please give me a big thumbs up? That's the like button because it really helps me out on YouTube. It helps them to put me out in front of people that have never seen me before. And did you know that I'm on TikTok? I would love for you to come over and watch my videos there too and support me. And don't forget to hit that red subscribe button and become a part of our family. We always have room for more and it means the world to me to have you. I found this little piece at a thrift store, and I only paid 50 cents for it. It's got this little piece that goes over it where you can put some candlesticks, and then it had all these little, like, I don't know, like little pieces around it, which I didn't really need those, and it had a Christmas motif going on. I just knew that I could get that bottom off and put some different flowers in it and clean it up and make it my own. So I took the bottom off of it. I'm going to get it real good and cleaned up on the inside and outside. And I'm going to take that piece that's gold that holds the little candles. I'm going to take it outside and spray paint it white. Now I am going to use this little piece of cardboard that was on the bottom because I can put my own flowers in there and make it my own and just put it back together. Now this came with these little flowers that were already in it. So I just plucked all them out, and I'm going to use my own. I picked these beautiful pink azaleas that came from the Dollar Tree, and all I had to do was just pull each of them off there and pop them right back down onto those little stems that was on there in the first place. Now, when I first started, I thought that I was going to do the azaleas and these little tiny pink flowers, but when I put it together, I wasn't too crazy about the way that it looked. So, I'm going to go ahead and put all of my little azaleas on there, and then I'm going to go with a different flower. I'm just going to use these little leaves that I got at Dollar Tree. I believe that these are called foliage, but all they are is like really pretty leaves. And when you look at them, they don't look at all like they came from the Dollar Tree. They kind of remind me of Dusty Miller. I don't know, they're really pretty and I like them. But I liked the way that they looked when I added the azaleas and those, and it just made it full enough, and it was just the right touch that I needed to go up inside that little glass globe. When I got all of my pieces put together, look how beautiful and full they were. Each of those little stems down there, just I just popped a little leaf on there, and it was that easy. Now I'm going to put a transfer on the front of my little glass globe. And I'm so in love with this page that has the butterflies. These are the transfers called Millet also. M-I-L-L-O-T. And it's just a page full of different butterflies. I cut out three different butterflies that I really liked. And we're just going to put these transfers on our little glass globe. You know to do a transfer, all you do is pull the backing off, lay it down... And if I don't use my fingernail, I use the tool that they actually send you. And all you do is rub it with that little tool and it comes right off on whatever surface you're trying to put it on. 
Then once you get your stamp off, you're gonna rub that little piece of plastic that it just came off of all around the stamp, and that's called burnishing your stamp. And it's just gonna give it a better placement and help it to kind of stay on there better and get a really good grip. Now, like I said, I just went around this little piece of glass and I put three different butterflies on here. And they just gave it that little added touch and with those flowers inside the globe, I just know this is going to be so beautiful. My first plan was to take some Excelsior. I cannot find this at all at Dollar Tree, so I had to order some off Amazon. And I wanted to place it down in the center of my flowers. But first, I had to glue my flowers down on that little piece of cardboard, which I did. And I took my Excelsior and I laid it right in the middle of my flowers. And I was gonna put one of my little birdies in there. Well, the little birdie kinda got lost, and it just didn't seem like it was gonna be right, so we're gonna have to change her up. But first, I'm gonna get my clay and just roll out two small little eggs that's gonna be in the front of the nest, and that way the mama's got her some babies in there. So what I ended up doing is taking the bird and the little eggs out and leaving just a little bit of that excelsior in the middle of those flowers because it just gave it a pretty accent, I thought. And then I'm going to put my flowers back up in there just the way they were in the first place and glue it all the way down shut. And that way we've got a good closure on it and it's not going to go anywhere. And I messed up my little eggs when I pulled them out of the nest, so I just had to roll those back over again. <laughs> and then I made the little bird a little bit more excelsior, put it up in that top part where a small, like, little small candle would go. And then I am just going to put the eggs back up in there so the mama bird is up on the top. And I actually like it better this way. I think it looks better, and she sticks out a little bit more. And then I just added that other piece back on it and put the candles back in. I hope you like it. Back in the days I used to dream about one day A life so amazing Have everyone judging me Don't wanna care about them Though it hurts so bad I wanna stay wide open Now this is gonna be our final DIY of the day and look at this gorgeous piece that my husband actually found in an old abandoned house. It was out in the garden. And this is actually years and years and many years of just being left out in the weather. And look how this got this beautiful rust. I'm sorry, but I think it's so pretty that way. I like it. I don't want to paint it because I don't want to mess up that natural patina it's got going on. But I did get that barkeeper's friend because that's what I read to use on like copper and brass and that type thing. And I shined it up a little bit with barkeeper's friend, but look at what a difference it made. It turned out so pretty and so shiny, and it still got those beautiful green spots of like that green patina. You know what I mean? I just think it's really nice, and I'm going to put my hens and chickens, you know, the flowers that are called hens and chicks, and they grow and they multiply. I'm going to put those in that for this summer. But for now, we're going to put a transfer on the front of it, and I picked some of these florals that came from that same transfer called Millet, M-I-L-L-O-T, and I do not know why I spelled it every time I said it throughout this whole video. <laughs> so I cut out the little pieces that I wanted, and I kind of had to piece them together. I wanted to put them on both sides of this line head. 
isn't this just a beautiful piece that I come across? And the bottom had a few like holes in it, you know, where the rust gets so thin that it kind of makes like holes. I think that's pretty. Y'all might think I'm crazy, but most of y'all like to collect junk too, I, I think, from what I've heard. So what I did was lay it down and I kind of got it stuck up underneath that little lion head thing, but I made it work. I used the little tool that they sent me and I rubbed it. And by the way, this transfer book that I'm using has eight different sheets of transfers in there. Another thing that I just like so well about the IOD transfers is because, look, I can cut them in half and just use the pieces. I'm putting half of the flowers that I picked out on the one side of this line head, and then I'm going to just make the other ones go on the other side. And these two flowers that I'm putting on here, they weren't even like side by side. You don't have to put it together exactly the way that the book is laid out if that makes sense, because the IOD transfers, like you can use bits and pieces of them to make a beautiful piece. But all you do is just rub over it and get the piece off there and then use that sheet that you just rubbed off to burnish your piece down. At this point, my eyes just weren't satisfied yet. So I picked just this beautiful, it looks like a peony there, and I put it right kind of in the front of all of my flowers because that is just the most beautiful color and it looks so pretty on this pot. I also went up the handle here because I had a couple of pieces on this transfer sheet that were like skinny small pieces and they were just calling out to be put right there on the handle. I think I added two here. I just kept adding different transfers until I was happy. I like these that had the yellow on them because it brought a lot of color to this beautiful pot. And then I just wanted some more. I wanted a white flower on there because I thought white would really stand out on this. And next I ran and grabbed the transfer sheet that had all the beautiful butterflies on it. I think the butterflies are probably my favorite part of the, well, I don't know. I really like the flowers too. It's hard to say which is my favorite part of the millet transfer because it's all so beautiful. But I knew that I wanted some butterflies on this because I love butterflies and I like big butterflies and I cannot lie, especially ones that you can see all the way across the garden. So I put, I think, two little butterflies, or well, one large butterfly and one small one on here, and I just did it all the same way, and I just think this turned out so pretty. It didn't need anything else but the transfer. So after I got all the transfers put on the way that I wanted, I wanted to add a little bit of some, like, antique wax. So I took the Dixie Belle Tobacco Road, which is a beautiful, like, water-based wax, and I'm going to put it on my lion's head. I went all over the place with this. I really covered up the bottom with it and then just used a paper towel and kind of blotted it. I didn't really want to wipe it off. I went around the whole pot and just kind of blotted it with that beautiful brown wax. And it just made it pop and it made it so pretty up against this beautiful shiny bronze color. It's just so gorgeous to me. I got the handles in every part with my wax. I want to know Where did we go wrong? Could we ever, ever change this song? Into something beautiful Like the beauty that we've seen
Hey there. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I am so happy and thankful that you stopped into my channel to spend some time and craft with me today. Welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I am so happy and thankful that you stopped in to spend some time and craft with me this evening. This, this week, I've been working on some French country upcycles and thrift flips and a few new techniques that I've never tried before, but we're going to explore all that tonight. We're going to have so much fun. As we work on these upcycles and thrift flips for me to sell in my booth, I hope that you find some beautiful inspiration for your home. Now let's jump into the first one. I got these two candlesticks at the thrift store. I think I paid $3 a piece for them. Now, they are not wood. They are almost like a, I don't know if it's, it's not a glass. I really couldn't tell you what it's made out of, but we're going to have to put some Dixie Bell Slick Stick on it. Now, Dixie Bell Slick Stick is one of the only products from Dixie Bell that I really, really do like, and I rate it highly. It is for surfaces that are hard to paint, such as glass, metal, you know, stuff that the paint don't normally want to stick to. It's basically like a primer. You're going to put it on whatever you're going to paint before you put your paint on, and it's going to help your paint to have something to grab onto. Now, I must say, it's not that I hate Dixie Belle products. It's just that I am a DIY paint girl through and through. You only have to do one coat of the slick stick, and then I chose the white color by Waverly, and I gave these candlesticks two good full coats all over. I went ahead and let the paint dry, and they look really beautiful, and now they're ready for the next step. I pulled out my IOD transfers, and this is what I have left of the painterly florals. It's beautiful. It's got these big sunflowers and these beautiful peonies. Okay, guys, I said it right. I didn't say peony. I said peony. I'm trying. And I only have three of the flowers left and a couple of the little stems, but I have several of the lavender. I'm also going to use the traditional pots. Now, this is another transfer, and it was kind of designed to go on like flower pots and that type thing. But I didn't want the pictures out of it. I just wanted the words so that it would go along with those beautiful peonies. <laughs> I just feel so weird when I say it that way. It's just in Tennessee, we always say peony. <laughs> so anywho, I went through and I picked what I wanted out of these. And we're going to put these beautiful transfers on. I didn't want the flowers to be right in the center. I wanted them to be kind of off center. So I just pulled the backing off and then you lay your transfer down and you use that special little stick that they send you and you basically just rub it and that transfer comes right off so easily. And then you use the little um, piece of plastic that it just came off of and rub it all around the top and that's called burnishing the transfer and basically what burnishing means is you're just kind of pushing it down and help it to stick better and get a good contact and then I picked these beautiful stems or you know the leaves that goes with the flowers and we're going to put those kind of going sideways as if the flower was going sideways itself too I did the exact same thing as before. You pull that white backing off and you lay your transfer down where you want it to go and you use that special little tool that they send you to put it on where you want it at. And you don't have to do this, but I like to go over it with a very fine sandpaper and that way it makes it look old and vintagey and I just like the way that looks. Down at the very bottom, where that leaf goes from the bottom of the candlestick down, I kind of made a little boo-boo, and there's a little crack in my transfer. And so, I wanted to use that word that says, Journal de Roses. Now, don't laugh at me. I don't pretend to know French whatsoever. But that's the beauty of these transfers, is you don't have to use them all together. But I put the word roses kind of down over it. And then up on the top, I put one little piece that has writing that says something about Paris. 
and it's going to go right over the top, and I just think that it's beautiful, and it just looked like it belonged there. Then I'm going to move to the next candlestick, and I'm going to put the beautiful peony down on that one the exact same way I'm going to do it catty corner. Now, since I put the flower at the bottom of the candlestick on the other one, I wanted to put it at the top of the candlestick on this one, just for a little added flair so they're not going to look exactly alike. I don't like things to be matchy-matchy because I think that it just kind of, it just does the piece better. You know what I mean? It's like, if you put it in the exact same spot, it's just going to look weird to me. But if you do it this way, it goes together in beautiful cohesion, and I love that. And I'm going to also add this beautiful little leaf right behind it, just like I did before on the other. Now, this is the smaller of the two candlesticks. And instead of putting two flowers on the larger one, I decided to put two on the smaller one. In case you haven't noticed, I kind of like to go against the grain. I like to be a little different on purpose. I just think it looks better that way. So... I put the first flower on the right side, and here I'm going to put it kind of on the left side, catty corner, just like I did before. Then I took the words apart that said something to the effect of plantes rares something. It means rare plants for the best that I can figure. <laughs> but I thought it looked best that way with just kind of putting a little piece here and piece there. That's what I like about the IOD transfers. You can just use bits and pieces. You don't even have to use the whole thing. And it's almost like you always get this beautiful outcome for very minimal effort. And that's how I like it. <laughs> Now, you don't have to use the bits and pieces like I did here. You could use it all as one whole transfer, the way that it actually came. I just thought that it would be a little bit something different, and you could see all the words because it was going to be on the front of the candlestick. And then I just ran over it with this little sanding sponge to make it look like it's a little bit older and vintagey. And I thought these candlesticks were beautiful the way that they were with the white. But I wanted to dirty them up and antique them up just a little bit. I couldn't help myself. So I poured out a little bit of my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain, and it's the Tobacco Road, which is the brown color. It kind of looks like the antique Waverly Wax to me, to be honest. I don't notice any grand difference. It is a water-based product. It's really easy to just kind of brush on. I brushed it all over this candlestick. And then I just use a baby wipe to very carefully wipe it away. I wanted it to have some areas where there's a lot of the brown showing. And in some areas, very little. Just so the candlesticks look a little bit dirtied up and vintagey. And that's how I like them. And you can go over these candlesticks as many times as you want. I start off kind of small. And if I like it that way, I stop there. But if I'm not satisfied, I keep going until my eyes are happy. Now, this is how I make my little bird nest. I didn't want to just be like everybody else and stick candles on the top. So what I do is I take this Spanish moss that I get it from a tree in Florida and I just kind of roll it around in my fingers and make almost a little hole in the middle and stick a couple pieces of the reindeer moss in there because that's kind of how a bird nest looks. Give it a little haircut if you so desire. Now let me tell you what Dollar General Store did to me. You know I buy these birds every single year. I always tell y'all, grab these birds. They're a dollar. They're easy to paint. And voila, you got you a little bird that you can stick in your bird nest. They made these suckers a lot smaller than they've ever made them before. I wish I had one from last year so I could stick them up side by side and show you. But I sold all of them. I sell a lot of these birds, actually. I painted him this green color by Dixie Belle called Juniper because I'm just trying to get rid of it. And I wanted to show y'all a good way to help your paint cans to not get stuck is before you put the top on them, take some Vaseline and rub it around the rim. And that way the paint doesn't dry and get so hard that you can't open your paint can back up. So I took the color 
Tobacco Road, that voodoo stain from Dixie Belle, and I just kind of went over my little guy. And now that I'm looking at it, I really wish I would have put some white wax on him. I'll probably go back and do that. But anyways, I hope you like this. And the other bird I got at Hobby Lobby when he was 90% off. When you took my hand, said, let's leave now. Don't want to be shy. I will let my guard down. Don't want to be shy. I will let my guard down. I want to love out loud. Talk a little. I wanted to let you know if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would love for you to hit that little red button and subscribe and become part of our family. We always have room for more and we would love to have you. And if you would, go over to TikTok and watch my videos there. And please give me a big thumbs up because it really helps put me out there in front of people who've never seen my videos before. Now let's go into DIY number two. I picked this frame up from a yard sale for just a dollar, and it was made really well. They had staples in the back, so I couldn't get the frame apart. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to paint the whole thing, okay? I like the saying that was on it. It says, welcome and bless all who enter. But I had different plans for this beautiful frame. I like that ornate detail around it. So I used Waverly's color called Ivory, and I just painted the whole thing. I think I went over this probably about two and a half coats. And what I mean by the half coat is I did two full coats and like just kind of touched up over that word welcome because it kept kind of shining through and I wanted to make sure I covered it up really good. We're going to try a technique that I've never tried before, but I saw somebody else do this. I can't remember the name of the lady who did it. She used this Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Spray Stain. Now, this is just a stain just like the Tim Holtz you know, stain that's normal, but it's in a spray. And I thought it was so cool the way that she sprayed it on this paper and did it. Now, I have to admit, when I first sprayed it on my little frame here, I thought, oh, great, I've messed this up, and I'm going to have to go back and repaint it. But then I just used that little wet baby wipe and just kind of started working it. I thought, you know what? I've already come this far. Let's just do it all up. Let's just do it, and let's just see what this is going to come out like. So I used this wet baby wipe, and I kind of stippled it around just to try to see if there was something, a different look that could come out of this that I might like. So basically, you can see me here just spraying, going crazy. That lady didn't use this much spray, but I thought, I'm going to get it up in them cracks and crevices because that's what I really wanted to accentuate. And then I kind of used my finger here. And then I used that baby wipe and just kept rubbing it in until I got it the way that I liked it. I really had no rhyme or reason for what I was doing, but I like to try out new products and just kind of make it my own. Even this, if this ain't the way that you're supposed to use it, don't tell me because I was having a good time. And I liked the way that that looked when I sprayed it on the mat itself and you could kind of see those little sprays. I like that. Now down here at the bottom, I used that brush. I just dry brushed that ivory color back over some spots so it wouldn't be so much. And then I finally got to the point to where I said, I really like the way this looks. Now, I'm going to take this beautiful transfer of this bunny. I got him off of Amazon with a bunch of bunny transfers. It's in my Amazon store in case y'all want some. They're great price transfers. I think they're about 10 bucks for probably five or six transfers. And I'm doing this transfer the exact same way I do all of my other ones. But do you know what it took me forever to get this bunny to stick? Because that spray stain <laughs> is a wax, okay? You're supposed to put your transfers down before you do wax because the transfers have to have something to stick to. So, anyways, it took me a while. I finally got him on there, 
and I really like the way this turned out. And here I go with the spray again. I just went crazy with that spray, y'all. But I'm just going to sit back and shut up for two seconds and let y'all see me finish spraying this up and seeing what I did with it. I fooled you. You know I can't shut up. What I did right here was I took that brush that had that ivory on it and put a little bit of that voodoo gel stain and kind of mixed it together and made a very light brown. And then I used that light brown on all that beautiful, ornate, just beauty all around that picture. And I was finally happy with it. The way that it turned out was several different colors of brown, and I liked it. Now, I got these stamps at Michael's. I've been wanting these forever, and I finally went by there this weekend and got them. They're called clickable stamps. You click them together, and it makes your word even. I was going to put the word spring on the bottom of my little picture frame here, but because it had like a divot in it, it didn't work. So I just went right back over it with a little bit of that ivory colored paint. It was just dry brushed on. And what I did instead was just take a little wooden tag that I put used for my price tags. I sprayed some more of that spray on that tag and kind of wiped it down with a baby wipe and used my little clickable stamps to put the word spring on that. And we're going to place this up on the side of our little picture frame. I just took a little bit of jute twine and just kind of lapped it over the side of the picture frame, put a little bit of glue on the back so that it would hold that tag. And then I'm going to put just a small dab of glue on the side. That way my word spring is going to be kind of catty corner the way that I like it to look. I don't like things to be too perfect because that makes them perfect to me. And I hope you like this one. I'm really loving the way that spray looks behind that bunny. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my date. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at fools. No, I don't care because I am on my way up and I won't stop. I won't slow down. Steady on my feet, I'm going to rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. Because mm -hmm. I know what it's like to be broke. I know what it's like when nothing goes your way. We're going right into DIY number three. This is one of my favorite ones. I found this little plant caddy, I guess you could call it, at Goodwill this weekend for $3.99. And it's beautiful the way it is. It really doesn't need anything. Look how pretty. It's got lavender, some boxwood, and then some other kind of little plant in there. But I had to just juice it up a little bit and do a little upcycle on it to make it my own. And I am keeping this piece. I'm not going to sell it. Now, with the basket, I liked the way it was. I, I didn't want to do anything at all to that basket. But what I'm going to do is take these little plants, and I had that color ivory, what was left on a brush, and I literally just dry brushed over the burlap on each of my little plants. And I love the little plants. They're in good condition, but to me, they don't really go together. They're like three totally different ones. So I wanted to make them a little bit more cohesive and go together. I used this ephemeral melange, and it is from IOD. It is some beautiful, like, seed packets and stuff like that. And there are some smaller transfers in the back. So I cut off three of the transfers that I wanted to use to go on my little burlap bag. My favorite one had a lot of purple on it, and it had lavender on it, and it said violetes. And then the other one said something about spring flowers, and then the other one was something similar. So I just thought they all went good together. 
And I'm going to put these transfers on just like I do any other transfer. You just lay it down. And I like to use my fingernails sometimes. I think it's easier. And to be honest with you, these IOD transfers go down so easy on fabric, especially like burlap or drop cloth. They just stick right to it. It's like they know their job, and it's amazing. So here's what they all look like when I got them put together. And what I decided to do was take one of these lavender picks from Walmart. I don't need a whole bunch. I just cut one little sprig off, and I think it had like three or four different little sprigs on it. And I'm just going to add this lavender throughout all three pieces so it kind of ties them in together and it makes it look like it's meant to be. All I did was go through and add like one little sprig, literally one sprig in each of these little containers and just kind of spread it out and kind of mix it up. That way it looks like it came that way and it was made that way. Then I took a little bit of that green moss and I got my green moss at Hobby Lobby because for some reason, I told y'all every time I get it from Dollar Tree, it stunk so bad. And somebody said it might be mold where it got wet, which it kind of did smell like that. So anywho, all I did was just put literally a couple little pinches kind of in the front and on the sides to make it look like it was filled with, with the uh, green moss. And then I cleaned up that area because that stuff makes a mess, y'all. Now I'm gonna take this piece of 240 grit sandpaper and see Roxy's already got a hold of it and chewed it up a little bit. But all we need to do is just kind of rub it very lightly over the front of the transfers to make them look old and vintagey like I like. And you guys know that I love my birds and one of my sweet subscribers, Miss Kathy, sent me a whole bunch of Charlie Brown stuff that belonged to her dad and some lace and just a gorgeous little package. And in that package was this little bird. Now this little bird can hook on to anything and he was perfect to set up on the side of my little pieces of lavender. But I needed to change his color. So what I did was just take some of that white Waverly chalk paint and just paint him. And I absolutely love his tail. It's like that LED little lights that you buy and they flare out. I can't think of the name of it right now, but he's just got a cool tail. Let's just say that. And then I used that paintbrush that I had that had that color juniper on it. And I just kind of dabbed it on the bird so that he would be white and green. But now that I look at it, he needs some white wax too. And I hope you guys like this one. Thank you, Miss Kathy. This last DIY is probably my favorite one, to be honest. Now, out of all the books that I've been reading, French Country is going to be the it thing this year. And there's nothing more French Country than a chicken. This guy's been sitting up in my bedroom for a while, and it's time to do an upcycle on him. I took him outside first, and I spray painted him all black, and I think he's actually very handsome black like this. But I had a plan, and this is what I did with him. After that, I used that color ivory that I had because I didn't want to go white with him. I wanted it to be like an off-white. And I just went all over him with two coats of this color called ivory. And I absolutely love all the little divots in this chicken. He is gorgeous, y'all. I hope it's okay with you guys that I've been doing these upcycles and thrift flips. I just had to take a little break from all the Dollar Tree type 
you know, stuff that I've been doing lately. There's only so much you can do before you kind of start getting bored with it. And I really miss my thrift flips. That's my favorite thing to do because you can find something at the Goodwill and turn it into something that it was never even meant to be and make it your own and reuse it. And, and that's why I love the thrift flips so much. And I hope you guys are enjoying them too. After he had completely dried, I took that Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain in the color Tobacco Road, and I added some water to it, and I'm just going to use a regular old chippy brush, and it made the most beautiful light brown color, and I'm going to go all over this chicken so I can make sure that it gets down in those divots because that's what I want to accentuate with him. And I'm going to just wipe it off with just a regular paper towel. Not a baby wipe, but just a little paper towel because I don't want to wipe off too much of it. Now, I went over all this chicken and all those little divots and indentions in his little booty just popped. And they were so beautiful. And just like every time when I use a gel or a stain, I always start off lightly and if I want to add more, I add more. If I want to take away, I take away. And that's all I had to do to this guy. And I hope you like him too. And y'all are going to get a kick out of this song. It sounds like me and my husband's theme song. She thinks I'm a little lazy. I think she's a little crazy. We like summer and we like spring. Watching wrestling and rain. She ain't shy, she speaks her mind Tough as nails and smooth as wine We burn hot as 